less to cut around. All right. Yeah. Thank you, less, to, less to cut around. <laughs> yes. <laughs> less to cut around, less to muck around. That's it. Yeah. I'm wondering if we're still on right now because you still seem a bit... I'm a bit quiet. Yeah. Oh, that's a bit better now. That's oh, there we pretty go. equal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a kind of bad thing. Oh, Got to get them yeah. levels. Yeah. <laughs> so I might just like stick around here yeah. a bit for the... Do you remember the club levels? I have never been. I, I've never been either. I remember seeing... I, I, I thought it got rebranded. Yeah. Because it's called like Sorry Grandma or it was called Sorry Grandma as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> which, you know... Oh, I get it. Because get it inside joke. It's just like, Sorry, oh, grandma. whatever I'm doing here tonight, I'm probably, if my grandmother can my, see me. Yeah, she'd be <laughs> upset. Yeah. Oh, man. Ugh. That's like, I think levels and I think of that, like Seinfeld. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's just like, I always wanted to see that visualized because I don't think the, I, you know, they... you know, you used to be up and he used to be down. Now, you know, now he's up and now you're down. <laughs> yeah, that's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. When jo- George, is, George is up and uh, Elaine is down. Yeah. yeah, yeah like yeah, she's yeah. just having a bad time, George. I'm George. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was a really yeah. funny episode, actually. I've got to rewatch watch that film. She did X to me, Jerry. She did the thing. She did the thing. She did the thing, Jerry. That's Ah, uh, that formula. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a perfect George screw. Oh, really? Thank you. We were recording. That's fine. Like, like this, this is why this I said fuck off because you won't be able to keep your mouth shut without interrupting. I wasn't. Like, I like. I'm. I'm. I'm <laughs> there are other. People I am. Here. Like. I'm. I'm being honest. I'm. <laughs> he talked during the recording, Jerry. He <laughs> talked start? during the recording. <laughs> he talked during the recording. <laughs> he talked during the recording. He did the thing, Jerry. He did the thing. He did the thing. Not the thing. <laughs> Not the thing. The thing's bad. <laughs> the thing's I bad. don't want to be a pirate. Why would people do the thing? Like, Who I've does the thing? <laughs> <laughs> it's good. So here's the thing. <laughs> why do people say that? When there's, if there's going to be a thing, Bing, why do you need... Beep, why, no. Was that Seinfeld? <laughs> no, that was Bojack, I think. That was oh, just you like, doing Bojack. Here's the thing. about. It's just like, stop announcing that there's going to be a thing and just tell me the thing. That's just that's just a sad version of Jerry Seinfeld's. <laughs> What's the deal? I think that was kind of the joke. They were sort of like hackneyed comedy writers. That's why they made a really shitty. Whoa, sitcom. whoa! Are you calling Jerry Seinfeld hackneyed? Um, welcome to the <laughs> podcast. No, no. no. Oh, I say Jerry. I I like Jerry Seinfeld's comedy. It just feels like I obviously it, prefer the more observational, like Dave Chappelle. Every or... every time I go back and watch some Seinfeld, um, I try to watch a different one from the last time. Like yeah, if I watch. Um, if I watch the Juji Fruit one, right, then I'll I'll, I'll try not to watch it because also I, the Juji Fruit one's actually one of my favorites. Yeah, so, yeah right. Yeah. Um, Elaine's like fake out, <laughs> and the dude gets run over. Like, holy, oh wait, what? Is she because like the, Jerry and George are trying to explain like the fake step, like you fake walk, and they'll keep going, and then you can like turn and like go the other way and get away from them. Like if you're trying to escape someone walking with you. And oh. she does it at a at a uh, at a crossing, and so she fake walks, and he steps out because he's not paying attention because he's talking to her, and he steps into traffic and gets run over because she's trying to break up with this dude. Oh, yeah, this is the yeah. old guy, wasn't? Oh no, no that was no, a no, heart no. attack or something. No, no, yeah. It's like you can't liquefy oh, a cookie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe maybe I'm getting it confused. Oh no, that's right. No, because she was at the movies. Yeah, I'm getting it confused with the yeah the Juji Fruit ones where she's at the movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the guy she's trying to that she wants to break. I think she wanted to break up with him. And then he ends up breaking up with her because she stopped for Juji Fruit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's coming back to me. She's now. like, oh, no, I'll have to get to the hospital. And then she turns around and then she's like, can I get a packet of Juji Fruit? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 no, yeah. I remember sorry, that. I'm like, getting you con- stopped for yeah, Juji Fruit. Sorry, I'm getting it confused with the fake out one. Like, yeah, 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 They teach her the fake out. <laughs> and then the dude gets run over and she can't break up with him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she had a bit of, because like, I was thinking of the old guy as well who had like a heart attack or something when they were at dinner. And then, oh, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, he had a yeah, stroke. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, like, yeah. when he's in the wheelchair and she's trying to say, sometimes people grow apart and he's like struggling to pay attention because he's yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh man. What if like, yeah, Jerry's not hackneyed, no. but like he also but, had but, Larry so, David. On there, yeah. So. And what I was going to say is it, um, it gets more dated as it goes on. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely yeah. a bit of that. Like, which, like, which, uh, sorry, as time goes on, which, you know, it can't, it can't be helped. Yeah. Um, it's certainly, like, there are other shows who have come and done the whole, you know, shows about nothing and, like, the barriers <laughs> they're able to push. Like, But at the same time, I feel like, oh, this could go into a, such a huge topic of shows are trying to do that these days, but it end up... Oh, too many. 
yeah, and they end up just being the same milk toast, or just completely lose sight of what they were trying to sort of parody in the first place because they're just so desperately trying to be that yeah. parody. They're like, wait, what yeah. are we doing again? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, the um. Anyway, you yeah, can, you can see them take a double take sometimes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, yeah, yeah. What did you want to talk about? All right, welcome everybody. This is the conversation. To Jordan, your horizon. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> you got to call it that. I I don't want to. I'll that, walk that out feels right like, now. <laughs> that feels like it's just like that's that's more Joe Rogan experience than the Joe Rogan experience <laughs> in terms of a <laughs> podcast title name. But um, yeah, there's um. So yeah, I wanted to have a conversation with my with my housemate Brendan here, because we there was a bit of contention around a certain topic that we got into a little bit ages ago. But I think, like always, I caught you on your way out and held you up from something. <laughs> so um, uh, I wanted to go a bit more into depth, which is really funny because when we're done with this, like I have to run <laughs> to, <make it> to <laughs> my next thing. Always, um, yeah. So um, the setup I've got here. Sorry if the audio quality does dip at any point. We're going to try apologizing for again a free podcast. Yes, you ungratefuls. Um, no. oh, I'm going to cut that out. You but, future um, ungratefuls. <laughs> you future, you You're not ungrateful be yet, but you will be when you get to this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be pretty free-flowing. Sorry if the audio quality does dip. Like I said, we're going to keep it consistent. You might hear some background stuff. I think I've got the gain and everything down to a certain point, but, yeah, there are other people in the house. Why are you so, explaining the technicals? Oh, just a bit of disclaimers. Like, uh, at the start of you my... You don't need to... Di- the the only disclaimer should be is if this podcast has you know small pieces and might be a choking hazard to those <laughs> under four years old. Well, that's a, that's a disclaimer. Something I thought about when I was making the Toy Story Four review. It's got a few disclaimers there. I my very first like title screen says there there will be cringe in this video, but um, cringe, I also man, Ugh, let's not get into cringe. <laughs> again, it's just it's projecting a subjective measure and requiring people to adhere to. Yeah, it. Yeah, everyone has their own cringe scale. Yeah, yeah. and and. And being like, oh, that's cringe. Like, all that does is then you're telling people you have to agree with me here that it's bad. All yeah. you end up doing is saying, in in the end, that's that's just purely a negative spiral. You just end up hating everything and turning <laughs> into a critic. And then we that <laughs> look, right, then, wow, that was your face. That was like, you know, the, what's that sort of like? It's just like it's a burn you didn't expect was going to be a burn because they gave a little story at the start of it. And I've already got the one video out. Am I really the, a critic the, yet? That's the yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're gonna save that for the you end. You took the you took the first step. You know. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I am now. I am. Was, I am evolving. Yeah, yeah was like you know, was Neil Armstrong, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, an astronaut before he went into space, or was it as soon as he signed up to the program? Good point, actually. Because yeah. it's like, what if you sign up and you don't end up going? It's like, I'm, I'm still an astronaut. Is it? The minute you started critiquing, critic. Which is pretty much as soon as you're born. Yeah. That's what I kind of like. I kind of like the idea of it. It's just like, yeah. professional critic is just somebody I, who gets paid for I, it. I kind of get that mindset from an old housemate of mine um, who used to say, you know, I never did anything. Or I never, sorry. I, I'd never done that thing until I had done that thing. <laughs> and it doesn't, it doesn't matter how badly, you know, you, you could say, you know, oh, I never painted portraits until I painted that portrait. It's like, yeah, it's a stick figure, yeah, but yeah. it's still a portrait if you intended it to be a portrait. It doesn't mean, yeah. it doesn't mean it's good. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's the, that's the point that always, because right. people seem to think it's just like, if you say, oh, this movie is bad, you sort of objectively give your qualifiers, all that sort of jazz. They think you're saying it doesn't count as art or a film. Mm-hmm. That's like a lot of people say with the Martin Scorsese thing when, I think he was trying to, you know, like he was saying, well, sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll reel it back a bit because like what I, said, what I was going to say is about just because you criticize it, it's still that thing, of course. That that's yeah. never, yeah, yeah. that should never ever be a point of contention. It's like a bad movie is still a movie. Like it's still, they yeah, satisfy right. the requirements to make a film. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely ne- never something I would say. It's like, even no matter how much I don't like something that's, you know, like like whatever song. What, what's something it, that everybody loves? Um Shape of Water. That's I not seen, I a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't count as cinema. Ooh. I haven't seen it. Apparently, no, no. apparently, it's good. But yeah, I, I haven't seen it either. That's the, like I'm kind of saying is yeah. that that's the only reason I picked it because I was <laughs> it popped into my head. It's like I haven't seen this. You could rag on that. Yeah, like it's one of my favorite things to do. It's like take a like take a pointless stand on something I haven't seen, and then when <laughs> when the opposite party is like, "What? How could you believe this?" It's like I haven't actually seen. Well, I haven't consumed this thing. Just yeah, for a moment, just make people believe that I actually think a certain thing, and then they're like, Brah! "So that's what you've been doing with me the entire time." I do it with you often. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of, 
um yeah so thank you for coming to your house today <laughs> to have a conversation with me. um <laughs> Uh yeah, I wanted to have a top uh, have a have that, a topic. That only would have been better if you had said thank you for coming to your couch. <laughs> and your couch, yeah. You had to get out of your bedroom, walk a couple feet to get here. So I, I just want you to know funny. I appreciate I had, that. I yeah. had a, like a meeting um for my team here once years ago, and they were like, they were all here, and I was still in bed, and so they just started without me. I got up, <laughs> and then went and had a shower, and came out, and they're like, "You are an hour late to your own meeting that you called in your house." And I was like, "Yeah, who's hungry?" <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, all right, that was. I really what, like that intro. Thank you for uh, like. Uh, I wanted to speak all for ask, a bit and then yeah, get into ask it. you questions. So, ask you questions. So yeah, that was. I think we already did the intro, which was just explain who each of us is and just talk shit. Um, I think we really like, yeah, you're Brendan, I'm Jordan. Um, we're doing real names. Oh, I mean, weird. you don't have a nickname, so it's I only fair. Yeah. yeah. I think have I was you Porker ever had a nickname? Hi- I was Porker in high school. Man, that's just, that's, 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 that's rude. <laughs> yeah, that's mean. Um, yeah, I think we'll keep it like, I'm yeah, it's Brendan, fine. You're it's Jordan. fine. I yeah. just, I just wanted to trip you up on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just throw a wrench. You want me to derail this as much as possible? <laughs> I'm a living spanner, and all I see are gears to throw <laughs> myself into. We wanted to have a look at this topic of creation versus criticism, because uh, you and I got into it a bit like a while ago. I think I might have mentioned earlier, and I think there's a lot that could be said about this. And yeah, we can discuss it today. But before we do, I was thinking. Shout out to our sponsors. Uh, oh, yes, no, uh, Roosevelt, sponsors. <laughs> Roosevelt and Ratatouille. Those are our sponsors. For today. Those are the two quotes I found. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, this whole idea of like, you know, creation versus criti- criticism, which is like, I'm going to do the terms first, I think. Mm. I think I'm going to spend more time explaining this. Webster just actually. defines criticism. <laughs> as- so basically, I added um, some points on to, like, try to be like impartial about it, like in terms of what creation and criticism are based off of like just the Google definitions. But what I went with is like, so the, like Google defines mm-hmm. creation as the act or process of bringing something into existence, it didn't exist before you make made it. In an artistic context, it's creating a piece, i.e. music, photography, film, sculpture, artwork, that is an expression of the creator's talent, skill, and observations. Is that pretty... Yeah, I mean, I happy with that, issue with that. Yeah. definition. So that's, that's one side of the coin. The other side is criticism. The expression of disapproval of someone or something on the basis of perceived faults or mistakes Mm -hmm. which is like why i put that's negative connotations because i think for the purpose of this discussion it would uh, help to make it like criticism is more of a neutral point so i wrote like i like that you think that that's neutral (laughs) that 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 definition definitely is like one side there because like criticism generally you do like you know constructive criticism rarely ever means you're speaking constructively, very positively. Fault is synonymous with failure. Excuse me. So it's yeah, yeah, perceived yeah. failings. And perceived <laughs> is as in like perception. So that that's a subjective measure. Yeah. It's, a, it's what it's what the the you know the subjective experience to something. It's based on the like, perceives as being failing in the perception well it's just like if a human perceives like on a piece of paper, oh, we're already getting into it. I like it. <laughs> like on a piece of paper that. Uh, I'd say they're a math teacher and or maths. Sorry, yeah. I, I watched a lot. Remember of what country we're in. <laughs> um, there's just say a student like shows their workings and like, but you do the same workings and like how you perceive it, how you uh, provable methods is not the same thing though. Yeah, like it's it comes down to just like I feel like like with my Toy Story review, there was like sort of uh, I was able to qualify the reasons why something was inconsistent. Cause like that's something that we could go to if you want to talk about my review. That, you know, I have. It's, it's my I haven't time. watched your review yet. <laughs> that's fine. A, it is. It is lengthy. I've been too I've, busy creating. Oh, here we go. <laughs> and that's where we'll get into it. So yeah, creation versus criticism. Brendan falls on the side of creation is better than what I think to be. So I don't think criticism is better than. Creation. I mean, I, I think I, I do not deny the fact that like you have to create criticism, right? There is yeah. there is an element you know of creative flair in it. Yeah, but it's 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 the minor part. I suppose, and that's like something we'll definitely speak about. I don't, but based on how our discussions usually go, I don't think we're going to reach like a solid <laughs> conclusion. I think it's just going to be fun to talk yeah, shit. That, that's, it's not for us. It's for the dear listener to exactly. to agonize with. When they go to bed tonight after listening to this. Exactly. You listening right now. You get to decide. <laughs> Just turn it into an ASMR debate. <laughs> and so, 
quite great. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we can basically just get into it from that point of um. Going. Yeah, because yeah. like your point is like yeah, creation over criticism, and I'm more. Mm-hmm. I basically see it's you like kind of have a, cr- you couldn't have criticism without creation. I, I when we talked about it, I made that point. And I believe that you can't have creation without criticism of some sort of some, because that's why I'm, I'm, I define the term first because I view it as a more neutral sort of just what we say about perception and realizing something coming to realize. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna define basically like our, our key arguments first, uh, or at least like sort of our viewpoint on it so yeah i've already just defined go, yours mine is go through them yeah of course but like what mine is is like i think it is as a chicken and the egg situation where it's like which one's more valuable it's case by case and both of them require the other to some extent yeah definitely yeah but um yeah we could from there finally we could get into I'm, the i'm not <laughs> like yeah i'm not saying you can't grow and improve uh, oh and never that, that's yeah, yeah and not that requires point at all. yeah like yeah criticism but it's not a chicken and an egg. Yeah? You don't think so? Uh, <laughs> no, because creation had to come before criticism. But that's the thing. Like, I think something is created because there is a... Cr- a criticism de- is responsive. Critic- but that's the thing. It's just like... You, so you, response means like like means something followed on from something previous. Yeah, but that's the thing. I'm going to give you sort of like hypotheticals to sort of work. Because basically... Is, it is you, responding as opposed to sponding. But that's the thing. It's just like... <laughs> Think about when, like, you created, like, you know, somebody creates paint or some, like, like some form, a tool to do, like, these. Yeah. Like, it, yeah, creating tools to create. Um, what well, my point of that was going to be more about just even in that context, you think about every time you're creating something, there is some sort of acknowledgement to what's come before or what you perceive and what you want to make. There's some, like... Uh, I, 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 no, I get what you're saying. I, I would counter this, right? Go back to... Um, early peoples anywhere in the world, mm-hmm. what are they going to do? They're going to reflect their natural environment. Generally, they're drawing their people hunting bison or um, you know, wrestling mm. crocodiles, whatever, whatever, whatever they did in their day to day. That's what they slapped up on the wall. And you know, as as the as the complexity of societies grew the representations of those complexities grew also yeah but why did they do that why did they want to Im- immortalize that i i think it comes down to a fundamental thing in um humanity and it goes to this point from sapiens which is terrible that i'm bringing this up because i haven't <laughs> read sapiens <laughs> but it's um the idea that um a bunch of anthropologists have apparently gone over where they discuss how the reason that homo sapiens won out against homo neanderthalus and uh other um other you know uh, sapient you know early humans was because we had the communicative ability uh to express complex ideas more effectively to one another mm. So sharing abstract concepts was something that we were more capable of because certain regions of our brain were more developed than comparable regions in comparable early humans. Mm-hmm. As a consequence, we it's essentially, you know, you, you can you can outthink muscles, you know. Work yeah. smarter, not harder. Yeah. Um uh, yeah, so cough that Neanderthals. Um <laughs> it it and it, I, I suppose it's um, it was one of the tools by which they were communicating ideas. You know, oh, we'll get together in a group like this, and then we chase the bison towards the cliff, and then they're trapped, and then we spear them to death, and we get dinner. You know, <laughs> yeah, like, that's the- that that's that, that's a tool for it. But then you're like, oh, I've done that. I want to make this more interesting. I want to make the people more accurate. I'm going to put horns on the bison now because the bison have horns. You know, whatever the bison might look like. You know, <laughs> depends. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, you you want to elaborate, you know, and I, I think it's it's an inherent yearning to elaborate, in terms of like actual creation. Yeah, I get that, but that's the thing. Like, I think that in and of itself, like, if we're using criticism as a neutral term, like, but you it can't know, you, it can't be neutral. No, it, it has to respond. No, it, it has to respond. I'm saying criticism, whether it's like positive or negative. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not talking about the emotions. I'm talking about like in terms of its activity. It it mm. can't be neutral. Yeah, definitely. Like, because otherwise, it's just um, 
it's it's I suppose it's commentary with not without basis, but it's it's commentary born of nothing. It's just like uh, you know, ice cream is cold, but, <laughs> but you know, if ice cream wasn't a thing, it would just be like making comment. Yeah, on, on the okay. on the air. Yeah, th- I, I I get that. Sorry, I'm trying to like sort of uh, basically what I'm saying is like when you create something, it is like sort of an appraisal or some sort of you know you're trying to improve. Like what you said about elaboration, mm. the the very fact that you are trying to elaborate or um appraise like and represent that in something that you're creating be it like you know the little stick figure drawing it's because yeah. like it's just like this is representative of something that i'm trying to express in a way that's some sort of because mm, that's what it, like the neutrality thing of it comes down to it could be positive or negative in because oh, like i think in, in the idea of the yet. yeah in the <laughs> idea of the elaboration right the the um the desire is shared to elaborate effectively or to have effective elaboration Mm. um, in both creation and criticism. Yeah. And anyone who's made anything at any point in their life, which is all of us, even if we don't, you know, like even if you work a, you know, paper shuffling desk monkey job uh, in a bank or something, which I've done that. (laughs) Or you live a bohemian lifestyle and you, you know, you're you like, oh, I'm a poet and I, I live off the fees I get from submitting to magazines, which I've done that also. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the, the, the desire is the same, you know, for effective elaboration. Yeah. And what it amounts to is that in creation, you want to more effectively create those elaborations, whereas the criticism is born of the insecurity that the elaboration was not effective enough in what was created. That's an interesting way to put it. Oh, yeah. like, that's, 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 what, that's what I would see it as being born from. Yeah, yeah. So basically, critics don't like their own making, and I just hit the damn <laughs> cable on the microphone. <laughs> that's fine. It adds a little bit of texture. Oh, I'll just basically. keep shaking it then. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's like, and to finalize my point. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I just I don't really know where to go on to from there other than I just like I oh, just, good we can I, wrap this up then yeah yeah thank you for coming everyone but um <laughs> just in terms of see each one whether it's creation or criticism just involves one of involves the other to some regard because like well, yeah, you, even if you do it to yourself yeah yeah, yeah, yeah like that's yeah, like yeah, a, yeah 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 that, that's that's what I was trying to get at yeah within within one person mm. you know like <laughs> such a yeah. To trot out a cliche, you know, you your own worst critic. Yeah, um, it's it, it's which it's, I don't necessarily agree. Well, it's like you are your own worst critic. That's the thing. You could be a, wor- a worse critic if you are not. If you are sometimes more airheaded or not as critical mm-hmm. in some regards, or it could be the opposite. If you are too critical, yeah, yeah. I, th- that's the point of it. I think is it's trying to say you know being overly critical of yourself it doesn't yeah. do you any favors. I, yeah. I mean, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, there's like at some point it is if you do too much absolutely yeah. but no, it's like it's extremes of the other way moderation is kind of the key or I, like i think it's because like any creatives i know like even like you know you, you do music right mm. like um or even with your review right you know, you mm. agonized over detailing and it was because of internal criticism every creative i know has that internal criticism i don't like critics because you don't need to pile on a creative most of them are going to beat themselves up about it anyway they don't need some third party chuckle nut being like oh you didn't get the color palette right in this corner of your portrait. <laughs> Go well, away. That's the thing. Go is, away. They're probably already agonizing over the fact that it's not quite the quite the right cadmium white or whatever. No, sorry, cadmium yellow. That's definitely Painters one aspect. Are listen like, to this like, and being like, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, because <laughs> I don't paint. That's a. There was an element of that where I was thinking, like, when I made my review, if there's going to be, because like that's kind of what like. I think I cut it out of the review that I said, I'm sorry if I'm mean. I think I cut that out of the review. <laughs> but um, I was trying to set up that whatever issues I found with the movie, it was going to be more from incompetence rather than maliciousness because I don't want to assume the at- intent. Or, but uh, people, people who are creative often recognize when they are incompetent because it's, it's like they will, they will recognize a natural fault. Most of the... I, I really disagree that there's like a lot of writers in Hollywood right now who just do not get like, well, actually let's come back to that later. Cause do you I want to read your quotes first. You mentioned, yes, you what I was going to do at the yeah. start of this. Holy yeah. shit. There are two 
pieces of media that I think are pretty valuable for what combats this. Because I wanted to bring up these points, and this is in no way an appeal to authority that I've, I've chosen Roosevelt, because, like, this, this is just, Wait, like... which what's... one? Theodore? Theodore Roosevelt? <laughs> it's like, is the man on the... I forgot the title of it. I, I basically if you just... if you read the quote, I'll be able to tell you whether it was um, FDR. <laughs> I can't even remember. Holy or, shit. or or TR. <laughs> the reason I brought this up the first time I was ever exposed to this um, uh, poem or like speech of uh, sorts. I think it's an excerpt from somewhere. Is um when The Last of Us Two came out, there was a lot of like uh, obviously a lot of uh, negative criticisms piled onto that for good reason. Read your quote. Anyway, Roosevelt, one of them, said, "It is not the critic who counts." Not the man who points out how strong the man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there, there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do, but who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end of in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least well, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Commonly referred to as the man in the arena speech. That's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it is it is a part of a, um of a speech he gave. Yeah, yeah. That was um so there was a, a game journalist who made this like side little jab that like just made a tweet that's like video games are too long and then troy baker too long <laughs> yeah i think he was he was being he was shit posting kind of like jason uh, scry i think i was like i haven't like shry or scry man, i haven't gone too much into his yeah critic. i'm not gonna lie i kind of agree with that like have you played tetris <laughs> it just doesn't end it's like, we t- it's like it's as long as you make it i don't know <laughs> <laughs> tony hawk's two minutes unless you go free player oh, um man. <laughs> but um, yeah the too long thing i thought was a, like I think that was just a shit poster. He just wanted to get some clicks and reactions out of that. Yeah. But yeah, so I, I don't know if, we, if we'll dive into... Yeah. So that's like he wanted the reaction to get... Uh, Troy Baker, who did the voice acting of Joel in The Last of Us 2, shared a screenshot of that. And I was upset with that as a response because it doesn't feel like a sort of appeal to authority to say it's just like, oh, look what Roosevelt said. You're wrong, journalist. So I just... Um, but the actual context of that discussion whether like i do not care who was right between those two because like it wasn't really a substantive yeah. point to jump off from games are too long so i was like games are too to long. a shit post it seems like uh <laughs> troy baker got it's upset like arguing with a meme <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah yeah uh man read your Is other it, quote yes well I, I i don't think i've heard that other one the the one that i just showed you or uh, no on, i mean you told you me did. what you told me before we started you told me what it's from but i um I read it and then I'll tell you this afterwards. It'll oh, make yeah. you upset. <laughs> uh, so this is from Ratatouille. <laughs> I haven't seen it. You haven't seen Ratatouille? No. It is... I'm really not interested. Top top five Pixar. I'm really not interested. All right, all yeah. right. I Don't enjoy your life then. <laughs> I will say like that movie, holy crap, the way they, they make food just... I mean, food is great already, but like when you watch it in an animation like that and they just present it... Oh. Anyway, you can taste that movie, is what I'm saying. The one with the rats. <laughs> talk about Ratatouille. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. So this is at the end of the movie. I guess I can give you the context of it. The spoilers. Spoil- read it. Spoilers for Ratatouille. Um, so there's a big critic uh, in the film who comes to this restaurant that he gave a really bad review of that led it to go downhill. And he's coming back because there's this new hotshot on the town who people find out is the son of the one who was like hot shit until he got that bad review so like yeah he he makes it big like everyone kind of knows who he was who he is and like so that's what makes his credit come back and be like oh you're trying to come back are you and it's just like so he's gonna come in and taste the food and then what happens is like so the the hot shot is kind of a fraud read the quote oh, but, like, all you're doing is telling the movie's story read the quote anyway yada 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 it turns out he proves the mean old critic wrong and he's like, oh, actually. Read the quote. I'll give you the context for it. <laughs> anyway. You didn't, give context for, you didn't give context for Roosevelt's speech. But I don't care about Roosevelt. I care about Ratatouille. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, I'm trying to be neutral. <laughs> and then your bias presents immediately where you didn't look up the, the context for that speech. As opposed to, oh, man, Ratatouille defending a critic. 
<laughs> um, read your no, quote. No, they're not defending your quote. That's read your quote. I disagree with this as well. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Anyway, oh, okay. I just have more context of it. That's why I wanted yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So both of them are pretty substantial. Anyway, the quote from Reddit to me, <laughs> finally, after like however many minutes we talked, we talked about the quote. In many ways, the work of a critic is easy. We risk very little, yet enjoy a position over those who offer up their work and their selves to our judgment. We thrive on negative criticism, which is fun to write and to read. But the bitter truth we critics must face is that in the grand scheme of things, the average piece of junk is probably more meaningful than our criticism designating it so. But there are times when a critic truly risks something, and that is in the discovery and defense of the new. And there's more to the quote, but that's more going into the... um. Uh, it doesn't expand on that first part. It's more just, yeah. That that's that's not a bad. Um, I think summary of criticism. Recognizing too that mm. more people are going to pay attention to the source than they are to the critique. Yes. Uh, like how many people actually read the film reviews in the age? Yeah, probably more so than I feel yeah. like I've seen more. Like, think about it. There, there's going to be because they they'll pay for this right like publicists will pay for this there's going to be more people who will read eat pray love than they will read the <laughs> ages you know um life column review of eat pray love yeah yeah absolutely that's like you know more people are going to see the movie than actually see the review but um in terms of the substantive stuff i just i genuinely think it's kind of like i'd say there was more like literal hard work put into like production on films like the rise of skywalker um but in terms of the actual writing and the execution the passion put into exploring why like exploring why (laughs) is what all i'll say because like one film is trying to explore why the review is trying to explore why and they're different whys you see but um so i think i've seen more thorough elaborate uh, explanations as to why the rise of skywalker doesn't work from a writing standpoint uh compared to like the movie itself explaining why these things came to be from uh the previous works i mean it's not like yeah obviously force awakens and the last jedi didn't do a great job of that at all as well yeah. but um yeah the reviews i've seen do a better job of explaining why it doesn't work than the movie trying to explain why it does work it and how things come to the end of it you know what i mean yeah yeah um see the thing is you can't see how much effort went into the people behind the scenes though so yeah i think if they if they heard that sort of criticism being leveled at at their work right and i don't mean the 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 end product i mean the total sum of their efforts Mm. you could end up yeah. Pretty upset, you yeah. could end up hurting someone. I yeah. absolutely like I, in a like in a in a song, right? In your band, hmm. how much of your individual work ends up riding out into the end product of any given piece you produce, right? You might have a dominant say, but it's not going to be all of it. I, I mean, I, that, that, that's part of working in in it's any you know body of community of work. You know, it goes back to the Homo sapien thing. You have to elaborate the. Um, complex idea mm. through shared medium, you know, language to then produce a, a, a separate secondary shared medium, in this case, music. Yeah. Um, and you're doing it in a community. Um, it's, it, 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 it requires that, that to and fro. But, you know, you're, even in a piece where they go, you know, go, just like go hammer and tongs, they're still going to come back and they're going to offer critique and their input is going to reshape what you might have started. Hmm. And they're, they're not putting down your work, but there is a huge body of work behind it, but not all of that body of work goes into the end product. Yeah, definitely. That's like, you know, like even if it's a more literal sense of like yeah. cut scenes, but... Uh, yeah, but that, um, that doesn't... So what I'm saying is like, you know, the, the team of writers behind Rise of Skywalker may have, I have to say may have, because I have no idea. You probably have a better idea than what I do. Oh, there's like reports and rumors of like... Reports and rumors, right? And then that's all we have to go off. We have to go off... We call them second-hand accounts, but really they're probably like fourth and fifth. Hmm. Um, You know, innuendo is is a business and business is booming. (laughs) (laughs) But they definitely would have put in a buttload of hours Hmm. into writing those scripts, whether they were good or bad. They put in a buttload of hours. 
definitely put in what they felt might have been most appropriate. And so they've there's probably a lot of feeling in it for them. They can't control like and we've all seen it and we've all heard about it again in, you know, reports and rumors. Oh, I've about, seen the movie, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But like in any movie where oh the studio got in the way or the director ruined a good script. Read the original script, read the script after the director's edits. You know, there's a lot of people who make those comparisons as well. It's, it's a similar thing. So the people yeah. behind the scenes didn't necessarily do a bad job because no, no. just because the end product was bad. Oh, yeah. I would never... I would like, definitely not disagree yeah. with that. It's, it's like, you know, you eat a bad steak at a restaurant. You're not going to blame the poor butcher oh, for cutting not. cutting bad meat or the farmer for growing, you know, rubbish yeah. cow. It's what the chef did yeah. with it. And like, but it, it, but it, was it just the chef? Or okay. was it the farmer who... Like, it's... It's a series of potential errors along the way and that's of can, any chain. Yeah. And you could find out where that source does come from. That's the thing. It's just like, I could speculate on like why the film is as bad as it is, but like and who the fault is of that. But that's like, it comes down to the writing for me. Cause I think there's like all the elements outside of, but then you know, someone chose to film that writing. Yeah. And it's not like they, they chose to take it from page to screen. So hmm. th- there's, there's a series, there's the, there is a chain of events. And people are choosing to take it from page to screen hmm. and their input, even if it's purely mechanical or is, sorry, is intended to, if, if the process was defined, you know, in a purely sort of um, Ford, you know, Ford factory kind of way, you know, hmm. in a tailorist fashion where it's broken down into the smallest possible repeatable component, hmm. um, you know, um, it, it's... Um, it's it's still going to have uh, a, a variance to it because no two people are the same. The individual mm. has a set of different experiences and this comes down even to things like education and that. So your education informs your, your skill set and not just like your skill level within that skill set, but the manner in which, right, the, 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 the mannerisms, the, 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 the slight eccentricities that you perform, that you you have in performing any given task. Yeah. Um, it, it, that's going to be reflected in the product, even if you're trying to do the same thing over and over and over again. It's kind of just recognizing where it does interfere with the other aspect, though. Like in the Lord of the Rings, I, I, like I'm not like I'm not trying to argue the inconsistency. What yeah, I'm trying to say is like that inconsistency, you know, would have been achieved through a series of monumental efforts to do something good and mm. errors in judgment right and this is assuming you know everyone had the best intentions absolutely yeah right? i'll never want to like sort of assume yeah, the, the I, intentions like, like, I, don't, I don't think anyone would want to ruin star wars you know oh. particularly because like anyone <laughs> grow oh, yeah. maybe someone on the maybe room. there's probably someone being like me and i would just love to go back in time and make a bad star wars <laughs> <laughs> ryan johnson yeah no, no um up all uh I think that's like you explored like a lot, a lot of interesting aspects. All I was going to say is like kind of like where we look at the the car in the background of the Lord of the Rings scene. That was an like, accident. Though. Yeah, that's that a was, different thing. It's an issue there. It does take out of the only if you notice it. So, only if you notice. Most people don't mm. notice it. And no, no, most people don't notice it. You've really got to look. Well, it's you got to like, remember too. Like Lord of the Rings came out on VHS. Oh, so, some of it did. Like, to the, like that would have still been when it, it was in the it was like, it was in the tail end of the transition period, but yeah. it was on VHS. So people are watching it in VHS or early DVD quality, yeah. right? Then you like, still see the car in the background. <laughs> you can, yeah. but again, it's not what you're looking at because the way the shots framed, you're looking at Sam and Frodo walking through that field, and that's what most people focus on. A couple of people picked it up, and it became this whole like, "Did you see the thing?" Like, yeah, it's a- which which happens in ev- like every movie where there is an error like that to point out. People, it's an error, look, yes. People, yeah, but it's not an intentional error. That doesn't make doesn't it- matter if it was intentional or not. All right. Well, the next <laughs> time you trip over, I'm going to be like, "Man, you're a bad human. Wait a bad walk." That's a bit of a straw, man. I never no, said you're no, a bad. No, it's <laughs> not. It's the same thing. It, no, was, uh, it was unintentional just because... It is an error. I'm not saying that it's like, fuck them. How could they possibly fucking do that? Those yeah. bastards. I'm saying that it's just like, oh, it was an oversight. It doesn't detract from the writing quality, but it does detract from the scene. Whether or not you notice it, if you like, if someone were to go through it with a, with a broad... Like, I'll, what I'll about finish, when... What about I'll when, finish my point. Yeah, like, sorry. sorry. Uh, um, is um, just the broad overview of 
the entire composition of the scene mm. if like you've, if you go back to and like analyze it or if you were casually viewing and you noticed it um or even if you didn't notice it it's just like if you actually do sit down fine tooth comb uh through like the issues that you see on the screen it's like oh yeah that's not canon within that world that high end eye or whatever the type of guy yeah. was that hatchback is not a part of that world it's like there is no unless like you wanted to try to canonize it. Yeah, could you imagine? Certain, <laughs> it's like Sauron's. It's like oh, yeah. ah, Sauron's high end eye. <laughs> but um, it's still it's like oh, Sauron it's a, wouldn't drive a high end eye. Nah, no. no. Tesla. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be fair, I think like Elrond would drive a Tesla as well. It's just like the no, 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 no. Elrond, Elrond would drive. He'd drive a GT. You drive like a classic GT. Okay. Yeah, yeah. fair, fair. This is like, that wasn't just, it's like disclaimer to all Tesla owners. I do not think you're a bad person because you had Tesla. You I know. just think bad people drive Teslas. <laughs> <laughs> not all Tesla drivers are bad not all people, Tesla drivers, all bad yeah, people. Not all Tesla drivers are trying to take over a fanti- fantasy universe. What I'm trying to say is all people trying to take over a fantasy universe drive Teslas. Oh, it is. Holy crap. <laughs> It's like that's the thing. It's like this is this is pretty substantively enjoyable, sort of like dare I say, sort of not intellectually stimulating, but possibly just like really entertaining discussion. Yeah, and that's come from that, and like it's that doesn't make it a bad thing in no, that context. So, yeah, yeah. in so that context, I, I want to compare it to another era that so they filmed those like those three films were shot as one continuous shoot over mm. the course of three and a bit years. Or Fuck yeah, was it three and a half years? Right, then that's yeah. it's a very impressive feat to do that. In itself. Absolutely. But my point is in Two Towers, Viggo Mortensen kicks that helmet. Mm. And he broke his toe, right? It's a popular bit of trivia. It's meme to the, you know, to the wall and back. Like, it, it's, it's, it's a similar sort of thing. People point to the screen and they go, you can't see this error. But everyone knows it's there now. It's not an error. He wasn't meant to break his toe kicking that <laughs> helmet. Are you trying to say, Peter Jackson's like, right, I need you to kick this helmet. When you do it, break your toe. It's like, that's the kind of Schrodinger's toe in that case because the film never, like, it tells the us that film, he the, the film doesn't. The film doesn't. His scream tells us something is very wrong, right? And he used that scream, mm. right, to act that out. He worked with the error, right? Yeah. He couldn't like, not recognize it. Everyone else who filmed it, though... And was acting around him. Everything else going on around him carried on as if that error wasn't there. Same as with the car. The only difference uh, was the only difference was the only person aware of the car driving down that road was the driver who wasn't aware that they were shooting a film. That was Farmer Maggot doing donuts in the <laughs> cornfield. But um, no, what I was like, that's the thing. The toe breaking, the scream that comes after it, canonizes itself within the frustration of thinking that the hobbits are dead. So there's justification for that. There is no justification for the car. Other than saying it's an error. Uh, no, but what I'm saying, I'm talking about his broken toe. Yes, his but the toe broken toe isn't in the movie. To... Yes, it is. <laughs> Are you trying to say, he's, like, Viggo Mortensen doesn't have any toes? It's, that's a bit of, like, a trivia. But toe the, gate. But it's not, it's, we can't see it. It's Viggo Mortensen the... didn't have his toes on for <laughs> filming Lord of the Rings. That, t- that toe is only there in the context of, it's just like, it's of like his when an, feet. When an actor in has the context t- <laughs> of the kicking, shredding his no, toe, it was, it's only, it, you don't know if the toe is there until you <laughs> kick the helmet or you don't. He wore his, like, I think it was an ice hockey or footy jersey underneath the chain mail. So, like, yeah, have you worn chain mail? Yeah, yeah. It's cold. Yeah. They were in New Zealand. Of course. The windshield yeah. factor on chainmail, like, to clarify for anyone who does listen to this, I have worn armor like that. I've worn <laughs> chainmail just on my skin in wind, right? Even yeah, in summer. Yeah, he has some weird fetishes. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> let's not even explain it because <laughs> yeah, now yeah. that I've said let's not even explain it, they're what gonna go. They're gonna go. Well, it's not a fetish thing. So what is it? Yeah. <laughs> Secretly, I'm Viggo Mortensen. I just go out and break my toe on helmets. But um, oh, sorry, I, I I derailed your point. Yep. No, no, no. Well, like, but that's my point. Like the 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 toe bear- breaking by him kicking the helmet is an error. But it's not in the film, other than it is in the film because that was the cut. We don't that see was the toe. That was the cut. That was the cut they used. Right? Yes. Yeah, I think they'd done like a couple of cuts before that. Uh, sorry, a, a couple of takes before that. Yeah. But the take they used that made the final cut is the one where he it's broke toe his breaking. toe because it was the, the third or the fourth one. It doesn't break the film even if he did break his toe in that. Con- if in the canon of the film though, if I he did actually, car, I don't think the car breaks the film. It, and I say this as someone who who. <laughs> 
I I rewatch I rewatch those films at l- <laughs> it's never intentional, but every time I think about it, I'm like, man, I watch rewatch those films at least once a year. Yeah, oh, it's I'm it's different. absurd. Like yeah. you you love something that much, you're just like, man, I can't stop coming back to this. <laughs> it's definitely one of those things. Like every time I watch it, it's just like you know, it's like my I remember my grandparents had the it was the theatrical DVD. So I'm sorry. But um, <laughs> like we all we all only had the theatrical release for a while. So yeah, yeah, the yeah, that's it's an interesting thought. Because also, have, I, I never I, again, like most people, I didn't notice the car until someone pointed it out to me. Same as but, Viggo Mortensen's toe. But the toe, it's like even if you broke it within, I, the con- I get what you're saying. Yeah, you can't see it, but what I'm saying is, is it still happened. Yes, even if he's tempted, like Legolas said, it still I broke happened, my toe, right? Lego no, no, no. It still happened. And both of them, for most people, in the case of the toe, all people, it has to be pointed out to them. Right? For yes. most people, both errors have to be pointed out to them. But cars do not exist within the Lord of the I'm Rings. I'm not saying they do. Can- that, that, I'm not saying they do. I'm... Okay, that's, I'm not saying that you're saying that. They are. I'm just pointing out no, that, like, no, no. the yeah. reason why broken toes can happen in Lord of the Rings, and but while you're you're trying to post fact canonize an error and decanonize another error because the, they can be justified by but what neither of them up. were intended, and that's what I'm getting at. That doesn't matter. In your judgment, it's just like in, in your actual, judgment. In my for me, judgment. yeah, the car's there. But doesn't matter for my enjoyment. It doesn't matter for my enjoyment that that car's there. I still love that scene because it is just like, remember what Mr. Bilbo would say? I still love that scene. But like, it is, oh, yep, that's an error. I'll look past it. It's a nitpick in regards to it doesn't. Have you seen, it, have you seen any of the other errors though in those films? Oh, there is like, there are tons and tons. There are tons. Like, there's there's there are a tons. scene where. But do you know something? I don't see them. And it's not because I'm like, I've got to block it out. I genuinely do not notice because the way it is framed, the way it is made, because. Peter Jackson and the whole crew, a bunch of professionals who are very practiced at their craft, were able to make it such that the focus is not on the road in the background in the distance <laughs> where this car is kind of visible. It's still like... It, yeah, I'm not saying it's not there. What I'm saying is, is most people don't notice it until it's pointed out to them. Same as the fucking toe, right? You have to have it pointed out to you. And even then, a huge majority of people will go... Uh, and move on because yeah, that's, that's that's that's, that's the me. meme that's still that's the meme at the moment with the toe thing right like you know um don't tell me about the broken or don't tell me pointless <laughs> trivia like, about yes the, i get it yeah he toe. broke his toe right like that's that's the meme that's kicking around yeah you know, yeah you know, um yeah now we've just like put a time capsule on this podcast yeah oh, it's <laughs> not gonna be timeless <laughs> but like that's the meme that's kicking around now. Like, you know, it's like, yeah. hey, can we watch Lord of the Rings Two Towers? Sure, but don't tell me any stupid trivia. Yeah, and then like, you know, your face is bulging out. Like, <laughs> trying not to say it. I said uh, we've definitely gone off a little bit off topic, but I still think we could kind of uh, make this uh, relevant within but, the. But the, but that's of... what I'm saying. Like it, it, it is that what you're making there is critique, right? Yeah, and I, I, I. Uh, I I think it's I think it's a a pointless critique to make as much as I think a lot of critique is absolutely pointless. <laughs> but uh, the reason I, it's just like the creation of what that does it st- what does it achieve to point that car out? It does say, oh, it's an error. It could uh, no, no, the scene could yeah, have been yeah. even better if or, it wasn't there. So Legitimately, you, so objectively, you, so it could are, have been better. Okay, so you are saying that for you? No, not for me. The scene itself would have been better because it would have canonized itself within within the objective context canonized of canonized itself. Yeah, by saying like it's, if if it wasn't do a you, ca- you don't go to the theater, do you? You've never you've never really seen a stage I've gone production. To the theater, yeah. I've been in stage productions, but like, have you like seen like proper theater? Yeah, I've been to like Mel. Uh, I can't yeah, the fucking yeah. Name of it, and and you've seen like Halloween. local theater as well. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, like school theater productions and school stuff. theater, like um indie sort of whatever. So does they- it bother you that like if you're not in the front row, like you can see all the tops of those heads that aren't in the play? Um, you can see the you can see the curtain. Generally, I like to be in the whether it's like the movie theater or the theater. It is, I'd like to be in the center, like in yeah you know, the middle, like what is sort of that's what a, it, that's where everybody wants to be. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't have to explain. I think everybody who listen to this go, yeah, that's the best spot. Yeah, yeah. Unless like you know, there's people with like eyes and stuff need to sit further or closer. Yes, anyway. those fuckers with eyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I'm going to go watch a movie, but I better leave my eyes at home. <laughs> um, but some, yeah. That's kind of just, that's down to how you viewed it. That's, that's not, that's... Uh, no, one's uh, in the film. One is your viewership yeah, of it. But that car is still in the film, no matter how you viewed it. Uh, uh, so yeah. it's okay for one, but not for the other. <laughs> I mean, it's just like how you viewed it. Yes, but I'm, I'm still and I'm, how I'm not you connecting how the two. you view it is you go <laughs> error. That's like pointing out a typo on a menu instead of enjoying the food. Yes, it's just like that's like that's not yes, how it felt. Like that's like that's legitimate. That's the thing. That's like this isn't this a is, major error the they, because the Lord of the Rings films are like but only a step down from perfect. <laughs> like <laughs> that's why I bring up the car thing because <laughs> they could have made perfection. <laughs> but then they're the fucking this is car. and this is this is the difference, right? This is the difference. You will never appreciate that Theodore Roosevelt um, speech because for whatever reason, and this is in you, and you try to you try to say that it's objective, but it's not. Because what you're saying the car is, is objectively in the film. Anyway, sorry, go on. That's not that's not what I'm that's not what I'm saying, and that's not what you said before. You said it objectively is an error and it obje- object it is. objectively. You said objectively detracts from that scene. No, it doesn't. Within the, the detract- context of what no, no, it's no. like trying to detract- frame, it doesn't it detract sense- from your enjoyment of your appreciation. A sense, a s- it, it detracts from your appreciation. No, it doesn't. I love that scene. Even if the car wasn't there, maybe my appreciation, who knows? You wouldn't be talking. I, five bucks says you wouldn't even be talking about that scene if the car hadn't have been in it. It's like because I'm bringing it up as an example now where it's an error. Like that the toe. I guarantee you. Because the toe is not an us, error. I'm sorry, Package. No, that was like, as, I get what no, you were no, trying to make as, with that point. Us as, us as, like, young white men, we wouldn't talk uh-huh. about a scene about a guy grieving over... Who, sorry. Young white men who grew up in the Anglosphere yeah. wouldn't really talk about a scene, um, you know, where a grown man is grieving over the loss of his, you know, grown friends. Um, Because feelings are soft. Jeez, that's quite a statement. I don't to make literally mean day. you and I. I mean you and like the. the if somebody's crying the, over the death of someone they care about, like, sorry, am I? I don't. I, I don't want to straw man you. Like, what's like? No, no, yeah, <laughs> no, no, you, you, yeah, no, no. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is, guys will not talk about feelings. It's a general. I'm generally? making a generalization. No, not objective. <laughs> generally, <laughs> right? And I think that's what you need to start saying instead of objectively. You need to start saying generally. Okay. Um. Uh, Woody's character is generally out of character in Toy Story 4? Yeah. Because there's probably points where he's bang on. Even yeah, even even if it is even if it is even if it is mostly off. It is so unlikely that it is all wrong. I mean, yeah, but only on a superficial level. That's the thing, it's just like it's like the character is breathing. That's just like what Woody did in like, you know, the previous films. Or that's just like what? Does he breathe? That's got the, the, the like, go down like, the rabbit like hole of the chest toys. up and down motion? They do have that in Toy Story. I don't know if we should get into this. No, 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 not in, it's not in, I mean, I mean, I've watched the original Toy Story more than most, but like, is that in, that's no, like, that's not in, it's okay. not in Toy, like they do shit, like they go, and they, like they yeah. replicate the motion, but when they're just standing there, they don't. It's like, if you, if you like their chest them, it's like, why do you do that? You don't falling. need to do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But like their chest isn't rising and falling with it. Of, it is in um, so in Toy Story three. Uh, there's the whole like the dog is really old and Woody's like, all right, Buster. The, the dog, th- yeah, the dog is a dog though. Th- that's not. Where I'm talking. I'm ta- yeah, I'm talking about the toys chest. That's yes, what I was yeah, asking. That's what I'm. That's what I'm. Let me finish. <laughs> so the the dog falls onto Woody yeah, yeah, and Woody's yeah. like, Buster, no! And he's like trying to get the dog off of him, and then he gets the dog off, and okay. then he's like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, all right, I get what you're saying. Yeah, but, so like, like, I mean, but they were doing that for a gag. Right, and also, even if you didn't, oh, even if you didn't have lungs, if you had no requirement to breathe, I'm sure it would still be uncomfortable to have something that's five times your size just suddenly land on you. I suppose that's if we were to ask the toys, like, why do you do that? I'm like, I don't know. We we can't breathe, but we just see the other. It's toys. a reflex, like, like because you also, you think about it, right? Like, it's um, it's the kind of um, you know, made in X's image kind of thing. Right, like people are made in God's image, and the toys. What the lit- fu- Whose Woody, image was that? <laughs> well, Woody is literally made in like humans' image. Yeah. yeah. Right. So. At least, like, so, that's what we can speculate. Sorry, to cut that off, because that's we still don't have any explanation of no, how the toys are yeah, alive. Yeah, why are they alive? Like, it doesn't matter. But the point is, is that even if they weren't alive, <clears> we're, like we make Ken and Barbie dolls to look like people, but they're not people, oh, yeah, yeah, right? The same goes for Woody. 
He's not a person. He is a toy. Like, he tries to tell Buzz, you are a toy. <laughs> You're not the real Buzz Lightyear. You are a child's plaything. Like, that whole thing, right? By that logic, it shouldn't hurt when they punch each other because they don't have a nervous system. That's a, Yeah, yeah, so exactly. I, it's like, ah. Yeah, when but he has the I'm only poisoning. thinking about this now. What I'm trying to say is, is it's a reflex. And that reflex is obviously derived from them being reflective of us. Yeah. So that that's a that's a human reflex. You got punched in the face, you're going to go, oh, my face. Would you say it's a sort of criticism or appraisal of something else? No, I, th- I think it's... I, th- <laughs> I try to get back on top. I, like, I, like, I think it's not something that was designed to ever have an explanation because I, I, yeah. I, I'd yeah. bet the house that... That you could bet the house, you know that expression. Yeah, you could bet the house that though the the character design for them had absolutely nothing to do with whether they know they can or can't breathe. Because of course, you yeah. don't think about your own breathing. They're not going to think about their not breathing. What what you just said is the explanation, and what I could say is that like maybe they do have to breathe. It's like either or. It'd be it's crazy like, if they had to breathe. Though. Imagine. It's like so. Like, Imagine. Every, every and time then still... you've got to freeze. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never seen them do that. Every time they are still, they just go back. Anyway, I'm alive again. Yeah. So that's like, who yeah. knows? Like, it, there's a lot of unexplained stuff, but yeah. the, like, it's kind of if this was a horror movie, it would be. They would emphasize how scary I that love, is. I love but, all those. I love all those recuts on YouTube, like Toy Story as a horror movie yeah. and Monsters Inc as a horror movie. <laughs> which also, you didn't need to do that for Monsters Inc because there's parts of Monsters Inc that are genuinely terrifying. Yeah, but uh, I think they do a better job. That's the thing. The world building, I think, is better explained in Monsters Inc. In Toy Story, it's not explained. But doesn't necessarily break anything. Doesn't, other it than doesn't need in Toy Story. It doesn't need to be because it's it kind need. of that that world. You know, it's either our world or a close, uh, close analog simulacrum or alternate universe, whatever yeah. you prefer, of Pretty our much. world. Right? Yeah. It's um, it's like Monsters Inc. is connected to the 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 Pixar world, right? Like it's it's mm. it's in the Pixar universe and it's connected to the toy story world because there's a bunch of toys in Boo's room that are uh, that, do you I think know that's that a like that callback whether it's like that maybe they're parallel I, universes well i it, think i think it started as as a superficial callback but then because the pixar thing was gaining prominence as the internet was gaining prominence i think mm-hmm. that they responded to people responding to those superficial like ooh look there's an easter egg right a visual easter egg that wasn't like buried cuz yeah. easter eggs used to be like a buried thing for nerds to like go and hunt for mm. Then they, they, you know, the Pix, Pixar made it so kids could be like, oh, look, it, you know, she's got a Nemo toy. or you know, Yeah, um, that, I think it was a very superficial kind of like, it's just like if we were to try to really narrow it down and say, is that yeah. canon? I would say it's just like purely, I but imagine they, if they gave they've, us an explanation. They've, gone, yeah, they, they they, they've gone out of their way not to explain whether it is canon or not, but mm. they continue to make things more elaborately calling into each other. Mm. Suggest, oh suggesting suggesting deep interlinkages right so the pixar the pixar universe like fan theory they yeah. they aren't saying it because it's better to not answer if you, as soon as you answer that question interest will die right so mm. for that reason like they can use it as a marketing ploy and an engagement ploy but it also makes it much more interesting because it continues. Yeah, that's right? like, and it grows, and those interlinkages grow. So mm. you 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 feed you feed the beast, and you do yourself favors, basically. Essentially, that, that, that's something that I would like. Just because it's unexplained doesn't necessarily necessarily make it a bad thing. Sometimes it's better when there are things. I in... I agree with that one hundred percent. Yeah, like sometimes like under the skin. Have you ever seen that? No, it's this really good horror movie where like. So basically these like oh, alien... Wait, no, I haven't seen it, but I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. about like these alien creatures that are sort of harvesting humans for some something. We don't... Yeah. All we see is like a process AI where it looks like human meat and you're like, what are they using it for? Is it fuel? Do they eat it? Mm-hmm. We don't know. The fact that we don't know makes it scarier because yeah. you're just like, what the hell are they doing? Yeah. So the, like the unknown, that doesn't need to be explained. It's yeah. definitely not an error that it's not explained. The, the unknown is something in, in horror that has... Horror and Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> Toy Story is a horror, um, but like the the unknown in horror is you know is their is their chief weapon. You know, it's, yeah, it's, it's the it's the best tool in the in the toolbox um, mm-hmm. for a reason because they know the unknown can be terrifying. The thing is, the unknown isn't just terrifying um, because it's um, oh sorry, the unknown can be terrifying because it is unknown. But chiefly what it is, is it's interesting because 
the human brain is chiefly an uh, an an answer seeking and deriving machine. I say deriving, not producing, hmm. but an answer seeking and deriving machine. What's yeah. this? Put it together. Answer right. If you can't answer it, you are gonna get. You're going to get a heightened emotional response. Yeah. And that that like it's it's interest, but the emotion that is attached to that interest, the interest is cognitive. The emotion that follows is context. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, blood no. makes it fear. Clouds, rainbows, and a plush fish makes it you know excitement. Yeah. Man, we've gone off a tiny bit of topic, but I think like that was a pretty fun tangent to go. But that was definitely yeah because we were starting with is just like that's one example where mm-hmm. we talk about like sort of the car and the toe breaking where I think. The acknowledgement of that and the explanation of why, I again, I'm still like firmly on the boat that like there is like in world stuff that it can explain the toe. Yeah, because I like I I forget the cars there. Yeah, and I, well, I guarantee you, most people who rewatch that scene forget the cars there. Like me, it's happened to me before, but yeah. um, like that's the thing, it's still in the scene, but like we, I think we're gonna, and, gonna go in circles. And that's about. what I'm saying there. The difference is the emotional response. Yeah, uh, the difference, like to sort of your enjoyment, is the emotional response, but like yeah. it's still I, in the film. I, like, I know you probably don't want to like admit it, but like remember, <laughs> yeah. so this is an old thing I've told you, right? You know, which is you know, if it sticks at your crawl when someone says it, it's yeah. probably got a kernel of truth, right? <laughs> yeah, your mum's gay. It's like fuck you, mum. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, it's like girl, oh. so you say mum. Yeah, gay. <laughs> it was like, and then you think about it, you're like oh, maybe my mum is gay. <laughs> no, yeah. no I, d- I don't really. I I think there are some but, instances where that could be the truth, especially when it comes to criticism. So, so enough, right, but. and you say you know, it, you know, it doesn't impact your emotional enjoyment yeah i disagree no i was just like we like the scene just as much if you were just oh well, maybe not just as much okay that, and that's what i'm getting but, at right like i still love that scene but it's nothing to do with the car in that regard it has everything to do with the car i absolutely love the hyperspace kamikaze at the last jedi from a purely oh, superficial standpoint so, like it looks cool and tactically it's a great idea if it worked with it, I don't know if we should go down that route, that road, but like the, the, the military, let's anyway, not get uh, into the military thing because like, I know I know more than you, <laughs> right? Like a Dunning Kruger effect aside, right? Like, I think that's the problem here, right? Yeah. You, you don't know spit about military stuff, but I do. It's not about the military stuff in this regard, whether the but, tactical, but that's, whether, but that's my point. Like it doesn't work with, I, I, I agree. I, I agree with your point. Like it's, it, there is, I think there is a question to be asked there for, the creators when like you know it's never been tried before i agree like that's nonsense it's it's, it's very far-fetched that no one has tried that before if you are very very fair to it you could say the best it it could be is a a contrivance but yeah it's a contrivance right i I don't disagree that it's a bit of a contrivance because like um it's like the whole you know successfully navigating an asteroid field is Never tell me the odds. Actually, that's a good summary of creation versus criticism. Like, you know, the, the odds of successfully navigating an asteroid field of 7,000 blah, 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 to one. And then it's like, never tell me the odds. And then he navigates it anyway. The cre- like the, the critics like, you know, it can be bad for oh, this no. reason. And then Han Solo is like, I'm going to navigate the asteroid field. In that instance, the creator is, you know, never tell me the odds. In that instance. And that's what I was going to say yeah. about the Lord of the Rings thing. Uh, it is more valuable that, like, that scene, the writing, the mm. acting, the composition of it, is more ma- more valuable, that like, to everything going on, other than the very surface level nitpick of, the, if we took it out, nothing would change. Mm. That's that's kind of the thing where it's like, yeah. what what makes it a nitpick? If you took it, if, if it's a valid criticism. Yeah, like, yeah. That, but... That and that's yeah, that's what I'm getting at. With but the it car. doesn't change anything whether or not it's. Yeah, there, that's what I'm getting. Which at. is the like, car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there are there there for there are mostly now a lot of recent versions have it digitally removed. Oh really? Yeah. I didn't yeah, know yeah, yeah. That. I thought it was it's the same as the stormtrooper with his banging his head on the door. They added a bug. <laughs> I love that. Like yeah, so they like they've done because George Lucas can't leave it alone. <laughs> but like he has to now. The, we, yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is all, I'm yeah. sorry. Someone comes, Come back. In, comes into his editing suite at Skywalker Ranch and he's still recutting and tweaking and editing. He's like, help me. <laughs> and they're just like, this is like, all I know. <laughs> oh, no. Um, oh, poor George. But like, yeah, like they, they, they've edited it out. They've left it in. They've added the bonk. Mm. Um, it's just, 
But like, I, what's the context of like, what does that detract from? It's just like that stormtrooper is clumsy. That that's yeah, it's like it, it doesn't matter. It's not. I would definitely wouldn't say that's an error with the film. It was that's, though, because like he couldn't see in that hell. Have you worn those helmets? <laughs> no, I haven't. You can't see. It's, but it's still you've that's, got that's, two that's... little tunnels. You're like you know how your vision meets in the middle. Yeah. You're in those stormtrooper helmets. You I, I, actually, I, I'm probably going to get a lot of hate from like anyone who <laughs> is connected to like five oh first, you know, or or does cosplay, but. The, the helmet I wore was from someone um, who was 501st. Yeah. And I, I, like, my vision didn't meet in the middle, so I couldn't see in front of my nose until it, like, you know, like half a meter in front of my face or something. No, at, half a meter is probably an exaggeration, but. At that point, you could make the so criticism. I'm not surprised because, like, he, he wouldn't have been able to see up. And it's, he just went. Dunk. It's still not. Maybe, maybe it wasn't intentional, but it, it doesn't. wasn't. <laughs> But it doesn't take away from the yeah. fact... Like, if you took it out, would it take anything away? And no, I've, no, I've no, watched... I, I'm still resilient to call it a nitpick. Because, uh, yeah, I still don't I've, think it breaks anything. I've, I've, no, it doesn't. I've, like, yeah, like, people bump into stuff. It happens. Like, yeah, exactly. You, know, you just kind of go... <laughs> but, like, with the car thing, it's just like... Yeah, it's an error. Like, that's kind of... But, like, where so, you have it's, I, think it's, I think it's like... Uh, I, I think it's, it's a bit like diegetic and non-diegetic sound, right? Um, okay. Sorry, you, I'm curious you, you, as to where you're going to go with that. Is but it? you know, like diagetic sound is like oh, yeah, sound yeah, that's in are. universe. That, Non-diagetic characters can't hear it. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah non-diagetic is for the audience. Diagetic is for like, the the medium, right? Yeah, like so it, it, actually... it's 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 a film term, but yeah, the the car thing is is a non-diagetic version of the stormtroopers bumping his head, and that's that's the diagetic version, right? If you took yeah. it out. It wouldn't take anything away. Same as like if Viggo Mortensen never broke his toe kick in that helmet, it wouldn't take anything away. Actually, it, it, there's an argument to be made there because like, yeah, you know, like he was obviously pain breaking his toe <laughs> kick in the helmet. It added to it. Would, yeah, like I mean, like, like, I think he, he I think he has said like he, he that that pain helped him like really scream. I'm sure in that like, moment. So maybe like, maybe I shouldn't compare it to the toe. The car thing? No, yeah. you shouldn't because I'm, no. I'm still. It's like I'll compare it to the stormtrooper's head, though. But even then, there's like in-universe stuff to explain the helmet. There is no in-universe stuff to explain the car. Well, no, because the helmet's got a, um, uh, it's referenced in a bunch of different materials. That the helmets have like a a, a kind of heads-up display. Like it's okay. it, it's an advanced yeah. piece of equipment that they have on their head. It's not just it's not just armor and a communications device. It's got like breathing filters in case of like you know gas yeah, and they biological can out in space attacks. For that stuff, yeah, yeah, they can breathe in space for a short space of uh, in space for a short space. Um, they can breathe in, in space, space for a limited <laughs> yeah for a limited you know number of minutes. Yeah, uh, you know th- th- it's it's advanced technology. Th- the same with the uh, the eyes as well. There's a bunch of targeting assisting stuff in there and a whole yeah, bunch of other full things. Full on HUD, yeah. yeah. Um, but it could have been a rookie. He could have been the first, like maybe a cut out. That's the thing. Sure. You can make some but that's the, explanations. Yeah, but that's what that. I'm saying. Like you can, but you don't have to. You don't have to only because, like you because you don't have to focus on it. You don't have to. Like yes, same as the car. It's like you could you could choose not to focus on yeah. any of. This. I wouldn't have this talked like I wouldn't I wouldn't have talked about this car ever again in my life if you or anyone else never <laughs> mentioned it to me because I wouldn't think of it. I would never have thought of it. Again, that comes down to just like your recollection that, of what you're able it's to your enjoy. Reaction. Yeah, it's your reaction. But and that I car think that's, is still in the film. And I, and I think this is the difference between, you know, being on the creation side and the criticism side. You're on the cre- criticism side. You're going to have more of an emotional reaction to error. No. For whatever reason. And I think it's in the person. No, it's just like... It, not. A, I don't think every person... Top... I don't think every person can be a critic. Oh, no, for sure. Like, every oh, person can like... be critical, but that's moment to moment stuff. Anyone could be a critic. It just depends on your definition. Your it's like government. like not everyone could be a professional music- musician. Yeah, it's just like not everyone can be a professional critic, and who knows if I'm doing a decent job or not. Who yeah. I think uh, I like I'm not. Work. I'm not trying to like rag. Oh, on. Course, I'm just like, saying. Like, I'm saying in the context. That, like how I'm, could how could you know? Do you know what I mean? The only way you could like, know is by trying and continuing to try, and you'll you'll get as far as you can go. Same as anything you do. It's just the validity of the points where it's like that's all, like, okay. So. What I was going to say about the... So I, I, I think we'll wrap up the I, Lord I'm of the just, Rings. I'm just trying to say, I think there has to be a certain certain series of factors in the development of a person to become a critic, as opposed to yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, a creator. 
right? I'm not saying they can't do creative things um, or do critical things. But to produce critique or produce to be critiqued requires certain factors. And it Mm. is rare the person who creates and critiques equally professionally. Yeah, no, I definitely... Sorry, and even if not professionally, but... um, predominantly in their life you know like I, i'm not trying to say just because you don't get paid for your art or your your criticism that it's not that yeah yeah no i i, I totally agree and there's i you're right in that I, I can't think of an example of someone who is equally known and proficient at both but um yeah i i can think of like a couple of historic examples but yeah sorry, like, like, guess, like andy warhol oh yeah famous you know famous famously bitchy man <laughs> <laughs> But then also has some of the most recognisable stuff, you know, in, yeah, yeah. in the world. Mm. Um, if, whether it's, like, good or not. Uh, I, I think, again, this is, like, this is me guessing. And I say guessing because there's no way I can critique. Like, I'm not trying to say it's good or bad or that there's any errors. What I'm trying to say is, like, his work is impactful. Mm. Um, and even when you look at it, you know, some of it can be really striking, like the Campbell Soup thing and the Marilyn Monroe one that he did. Like, those are all striking. Um that I th- and I think, I think he, you know, like I, I, I don't know of a, yeah, I don't know of a contemporary example, yeah, where you could say someone is both. Yeah, I'm not I saying that they don't exist. Anybody. They probably, there probably is someone alive today. Yeah, sure. But, um, but uh, yeah, as far as like even like some of the YouTube critics I know, they put out work, but they're mostly known for their YouTube criticism, yeah, um, so on and so forth. But. Yeah. Um, if we're going to talk about that, because that's why I wanted to wrap up the Lord of the Rings thing, because I think that's the thing, back to the point of creation versus criticism, I think it is down to a case-by-case. Yeah, I, was, I was just trying to say, I think the response demonstrates the difference. Like you yeah. said at the top, you know, like I'm on one side and you're on the other. And I think the response to error demonstrates the difference. So at, at least immediately, like if you're trying, you know, if you're trying to identify a critic, <laughs> show them this scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was a good read. Yeah, gray, it, gray it out, and then like tilt it to forty-five degrees. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm pretty happy with that re. I'm sure it's going to hurt a lot of listeners' ears. <laughs> anyone does listen to this, but I just want to say that I'm pretty proud of that. But um, the reason I want to wrap up on uh the point of the Lord of the Rings thing is because like the case by case of. I don't think it's necessarily binary that creation is better than criticism because I think there's like scenarios where a criticism is more valuable to something than the work. Like think about if I could be like even just to defy the terms of redrafting. So The Last Jedi was written on the first draft. Oh, it was written on the first draft. Everything was written on the first <laughs> I never did it before I did it. <laughs> the space between spaces. <laughs> <laughs> The Last Jedi was, the movie was created with just working off the first draft. But criticisms that I've seen. Was it really? It was. But um, Mm. uh, the YouTube critic, uh, Bowler, who I gush about every now and then. uh, (laughs) So I'm still getting over, they worked with the first draft? Yeah. They worked with the first draft? Can take a moment, silence for package two. I mean, okay, look, I, I, like... I'll do that often enough because I'll I'll write a short poem. Yeah, yeah. But six lines of poetry does not a film make. <laughs> you cannot, you cannot with a novel sized script. You cannot work with the first draft. That's the longest Star Wars movie as well. It would be a miracle if you could. Um, I know it's not it's not just Star Wars. Any film. Oh it, yeah, I totally agree. You should never, even if it's like, even if it was theoretical. I, I hope my best friend listens to this. Because <laughs> yeah. like he's studying writing and like he writes like he is a writer and he is studying writing, uh, and has always objected to like how sometimes I'll just be like, "Here's this poem," and he's like, "How many times did you go over this?" And I'm like, "What? Go yeah. over it?" Yeah. Like, I think if you heard that, he'd have a pink. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure there's examples of just say something was written on the first draft and it was really good, but as a general sort of yes, if we're talking yeah. about it doesn't mean what, it's flawless. Not at all. Like yeah. I would. I would wager that anybody who, like, even if you had the best writer ever and, yeah. like, with the worst writer ever, yeah. like, but polar opposites, their first draft of the best writer yeah. ever, even if the second person did, like, a hundred drafts, yeah. and it was really working <clears throat> to, if they tried their but, best, but I mean, that I feel hundred like it drafts, would be better. Yeah, that hundred drafts thing, like, you bring up a good point, like, 
I think I mentioned this the first time we talked about it was you know the difference between criticism and critique. Okay. I, I distinguish yeah. between that. Like you need criticism if you're going to rework something until it's finished, right? Mm, and that criticism yeah. can come from inside. You have to be honest with yourself, and it's a rare person who can be that honest with themselves. Yeah, yeah. Critique, critique is it, critique is responding to the um, the final product. Yeah, um, yeah. To an to an extent, if you're talking about like, so critique um, is what a critic produces. Yeah, a critique, yeah. right? They a produce a critique. Yeah, Criti- so criticism is is elements of critical response to something yeah right okay. yeah definitely agree and then you you need a series of criticisms to make a critique hmm. um you know you could provide a critique on drafts uh for sure yeah that's why they go to test audiences for films yeah 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 and they do <laughs> i feel like that's mostly just to be like getting the good reviews like these days test screenings aren't really to test the quality as much as they're just like, hey, we're going to fly you out to mm. to review our latest film. Would you like some champagne? We'll pay for the plane tickets mm. here. You want the meal? Anyway, you see that 10 out of 10 score? It's just like, and then if it's just like, oh, we give it a 7 out of 10. It's just like, all right, you're not invited to our future test ratings of the other movies. They really do that. They just shut them out. I'm not surprised. It's just like from everything I've heard, like that, the very, like, I swear I've heard instances like, Maybe I'm talking at my ass, but it just it reads so true to me that I'm, there would I'm be. Not, I, I'm not. I like. I, I I believe you because. Yeah, I yeah. would not be surprised if, like, even if it's not like a direct sort of they they get people, a note saying, are, "Hey, change the reviews." Yeah, people are too ready to shut out. Like, negative. yeah, I mean, you look at like, um, sorry, excuse me. Um, there are games companies who mm-hmm. uh, flagged I, I negative not, reviews. I know about this. Yeah, I they, do like, know about that. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know about the like. Yeah. So like. You're video not coming reviews. to our next review part. You can't sit <laughs> with us. I feel like negative reviews are more likely to get flagged for copyright violations than positive reviews, based on what I've heard of. Like, there's been releases of like video games that get um, big algorithm strikes yeah. again. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. I, I feel like I, I should have the examples to back it up. So just because we've gotten onto this topic, that yeah, I'm just yeah. I'm mentioning it now. So oh, no, everyone I, else, I, verify for me, please. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I know I know about the games industry being bad for this. Oh yeah, I feel like the games industry is easily the worst. Uh, yeah, in, in politics, in Australian politics, anyway. Like you, you know, we take an Aussie expression for it, um, and we call it you know feeding the chooks. It's um yeah, it's where you like give the little, the little bites to the um. To the, to the favorable press, so yeah. that way it gets echoed over and over. Mm. Um, so it, it it it's it's unsurprising that um, the the film industry would do something like that. But uh, yeah. um, I think that in its in and of itself is born from a couple of uh, very natural human drives, which is to to avoid negative responses to your behavior whether you're cr- creating or just you know you're producing a salad or whatever you're doing right like wh- whatever whatever you're doing you're trying to avoid that negative response because if you've got a negative response in you know um uh pre-organized societies right you end up with um you end you end up with exclusion from the tribe yeah exactly that's and, actually- and that's death yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. If you if you can't be in an early tools low productive capacity society, uh, and you're excluded, you would die because they're all hunting together to get enough meat for everybody, and they're all picking enough fruit and berries and root vegetables for everybody to survive. You know? Yeah. Um, uh, e- even in you know er- early sort of like settled and harvesting communities, yeah. So you want to avoid that because you you die, and that's an evolved response, you know, because th- you you see this response in, um, in the the great apes and things as well. Yeah, that's actually uh, to build onto that. Like, I think that's an interesting lens to make because like whether that um sort of pattern of behavior or whether like that follow through does lead to good results because that's the yeah. thing it's just like like you know do you, you, you do you feel that before you put a song out like oh, actually oh, what about your yeah. what about your re- your review how much did you agonized over that thing like oh i've got to get i've got to get this right oh, i've got to get this perfect and yeah, then yeah. we were just talking about it before we started recording like you're saying oh yeah look there was some feedback and there were comments about a couple of things that you know i can work on but they were good i was glad to get it 
Hmm. I I think it's good to have that attitude in response to it. But what I'm saying is hmm. like you you agonized over it because you were scared that if you put it out and it's negative, you feel like you're going to lose. In a modern society, it's very unlike. Oh, sorry. In a modern in a modern advanced, uh, all right, I shouldn't call Australia's economy you know, an advanced economy. We've <laughs> Well, we're a primary producing nation, right? We yeah. make we make houses and we dig metals out of the ground and we export our wheat and meat. Like, fuck yeah. Yeah, it's the basics. <laughs> Housing, feeding, building. <laughs> like, it's like... Actually, it sounds kind of badass. Fuck but, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <Anyway. laughs> Digging rocks, eating grains, living. <laughs> Digging rocks and smoking coke. <laughs> Fuck yeah! But um, that's um, yeah, like it, it, y- yeah, you, you agonized over that, you know. Yeah. Um, but you're you're not gonna die because we have a decent social safety net here. Of course not. Like that's right. a, that's yeah. Like like if 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 your boss saw that and was like, man, I can't believe you shit on Toy Story Four like that. You're fired. You have Could to you imagine? Yeah. You should have read your fine print. Like <laughs> fine print. there will be no bad words no about <laughs> the mouse. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's. Um, and then, yeah, and then, like, like even if that happened, you're not going to die. Of course not. Right. Um, but I, I want to... Um, if anything, uh, you get a payout. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we've got good industrial relations laws. Yeah, just like, union. Yeah. They, they said I didn't yeah, like... They fired you because you didn't like something. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh, like man. firing someone because <laughs> they, they don't like the same ice cream as you. <laughs> didn't like the colour of their hair. <laughs> and that's oh. happened. Oh, I'm sure it there, is, there, like there is there is there is cases yeah. of of that happening. That's why we have our unions? Fuck yeah. yeah. But um, what I was going to uh, add on to that is like the, I've got two things because mm. like what you said there, I really about the the fear of rejection. Yeah, like yeah. but also like what that like where that stems from, like people avoiding. I'll I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll address that point first because yeah, even Cause, even in even early late you could even argue like to late modern right not mm. postmodern but late modern society so you know the you good know. modern not the post one yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't know they didn't have they didn't have antibiotics eh, you know natural selection oh, but that's what i'm saying right like you 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 had to survive on your own and then you would literally subject to the most natural of selection because it, mm. it was um like look at things like the persecution of witches in europe right there's mm. a whole there's a whole thing of study around that, and like and i've actually taken part in this study and there are there are very good arguments to be made that um in some instances it was partly intended to drive women out of certain aspects of certain societies generally Oof. like generally at a very local level it was things like you know acquiring wealth resources or influence they might have uh, access to an example of which is um there was a a wealthy i think she was a she might have been a, uh, a widow mm-hmm. um and she was like a noble lady in ireland uh and she got prosecuted twice but was found innocent both times. And I think <laughs> partly what helped her there is the fact she had resources so she could probably hire a decent lawyer to prove she wasn't a witch. Witch privilege, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> witch privilege. That's, that's the kind of privilege I want witch to see. Privilege? Witch privilege? Witch privilege. Yeah, witch privilege. Yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> the only privilege you should have is because of your supernatural powers. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, that's just yeah. like, that seems like, it's just like yeah, 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 that's a privilege. Yeah. If, you, if privilege you don't give the... me that promotion, I'll curse you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and oh and God. and you want to talk? You want like you want to talk about that sort of thing? Like you know, um, witches weren't just ladies either. But anyway, yeah, yeah. it's like so. This woman, like, um, in her particular case, it seemed like a couple of the local um, bigwigs were just trying to get hold of her assets. Yeah, like her her land, like the house in, in which she lived, her land and all that. Since her husband had died. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's very interesting. Um, I wanted to. There was something I wanted to. Sorry, I, I really like that. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. And if it had been successful and they'd taken all their land and stuff, even if she had have just been like cast out, which there, there are examples where people were just driven away from a society, even if they were fleeing or they were proactively driven away uh, instead of execution. Execution were actually wasn't as common as what a lot of people think. It did happen a lot, but mm. it wasn't as common as what people think. Yeah. There, there were all alternative punishments available <laughs> yeah like um, and often a lot of them like would recant and go through effective to- effectively torture not effectively yeah. actually torture <laughs> while through you know recanting and um exorcisms and different things like that um yeah 
but there were a lot of instances, you know, where they'd have to run away to the next town or something, and maybe the rumors had already gotten to the next town that they were accused, so they'd have to like live in the woods. You know, um, yeah. that, that's a, that's a common story in in Germany, or common enough story in Germany, um, and your ability to survive on your own the later and later time goes on you, you you the skills aren't taught like if 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 i like if i kicked you out of the house and i let all of the world know that you are not to be let in anywhere <laughs> like what the, how likely do you think it is you would survive like how long yeah. do you reckon you're going to last that's a, that's a very extreme example what i was it, going it, to it, say. i mean it is but that's the but ex- that's the extremity of being driven out and that's mm. where that fear is driven from is because yeah. in in times before we were all of us living in you know even in mud huts you know we're still you know hunkering under caves and cliff ledges um where don't we're let him hunting in, he gatherers. Broke my rock huh don't let him in he broke my don't, rock don't, he broke my favorite rock <laughs> um that that meant death you would die yeah, essentially. You couldn't yeah. gather enough resources. Something might kill you because things were bigger and deadlier then. <laughs> That's an interesting observation. That sorry, the, the, what I wanted to add on to that point of just like you're talking about how people are so like against receiving the negative sort of criticism yeah, and because we'll, the cognitive dis- together strong, <laughs> they'll make the efforts to sort of like push that away. Mm. It's kind of like a very a microcosm of that is what I'm trying to think of when somebody. It's, it's because it's it's management because it, like it, even even effectively communicating one negative response has the possibility to, you know, in, in the modern parlance, go viral. Yeah. Right? So yeah. if it spreads, uh, that could be a real problem. Yeah. Uh, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of like when somebody exhibits like sort of shitty behavior mm. or something like that and somebody, and they keep the, co- you know, like, like cognitive dissonance of like pushing aside people who are saying it's like, you yeah. do that. and it's just like, no, this is like, I'm enjoying like the, like sort of the road I'm traveling down. So like, He's like, don't take me away from that. That kind of just like, yeah. that's one. Generally, though, they've got something that reinforces them to so to know that they can fall back on. Yeah, that's um, I'm sure like that. That's their own like. Whether it's fr- whether it's particular friends who do the same or or happily indulge negative behaviors, yeah, or, or and family, that's... and commonly it's probably family they're falling back on. Yeah, and that's the that's the kind of tribe that they stay yeah. part of, and the people who are criticizing them, it's like you're out of that, and just like and just like you've lost that part of the. It's like that they get pushed out of that part of the tribe. You know what I mean? Like so, yeah. it's just like it's like now the five people who are acting out the one person is like, guys, I don't think we should do that. And to go back to the creation versus criticism thing, mm-hmm. in that regard, it's like you know, creating the shitty behavior versus criticizing it, which one is more valuable? Yeah. Even if five people are just saying, let's all yeah, uh, but yeah, but we're not talking about creating shitty behavior. It's about creating a shitty. Oh, sorry, creating yeah, uh, yeah have having a shitty creation. Fair right? enough. Yeah, yeah, like, like if like, someone yeah. makes something bad. Um, they, they can probably learn from it. I don't doubt that, again, like I was saying earlier, most people who create anything are very aware of uh, and probably more aware than the critic Sometimes, of, of, yeah. the, of the failings. That's why I said most, you know, um, of the failings in their own creations. Yeah. Of course, like that's... Um, what, the, 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 like what we were talking about Wonder Woman before. I think this might be oh, time yeah, to bring yeah, it up. Bring, yeah, but, bring um, it up. Bring but it up. first I'll say is like, yeah, because like you're familiar with the concept of death of the author and just like how things that they say about it may not like even it's like oh, they have yes. about as much to say Sorry, about the yes. piece as somebody else who was able to yes 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 yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause yeah. which i think I, I think given the way because uh, I've, like i've also studied literature and i think given the way mm. that, that sort of goes the 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 death of the author the author thing has um has much more prevalence now than it did oh definitely um because most authors are dead. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's completely out Literature of Literature is dead. That's, <laughs> that's what Nietzsche should have said. No one was worried about whether God was dead or not. They wanted to make sure that the good book hadn't died. And I don't mean the good book. I meant yep, well, yeah, yeah, uh, a good book. Yeah. A good book I liked. Um, he broke my like... favorite book. <laughs> Kick him out. That's it. Well, that's going to be... <laughs> but um, in the regards of like, I've heard examples made like, Okay, have you seen The Suicide Squad? I have to enunciate The, so that we're not talking about the fucking yeah. travesty that was 2016. But, um, um, so in The Suicide Squad, there's the character of Polka Dot Man. Oh, and no, sorry. I haven't seen this yet. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, I don't want to spoil it then. But yeah, don't. <laughs> it's, it's really good for DC. But, um, yeah, apparently like, it is good. I've, I, I definitely, it's my favorite out of like the DC movies, yeah. like all the DC EU Zack Snyder, you know, mm. horror world. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. um, 
there's this character that like is like sort of a I think I'm stealing this like because this was brought up on uh, every frame of pause, but it's like, it's based on response to something James Gunn said about the character. So like the character of Polka Dot Man is portrayed as they like, have this sort of um the very shy. They have a lot of uh yeah. It's, sorry, it's hard to do this like if you haven't seen the film, but like I, I've but, seen that ad where yeah, you know, it's like you know we're uh, and it got memed. You know, it's like we're all gonna die, and it's like I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> He's very down in the dumps. He yeah, like, doesn't have a lot of confidence. His He's whole like, character is communicated in that moment. Like yeah, I knew exactly what we were getting. And I yeah. still haven't seen the film. I know exactly what he's going to be like when I watch it. He was created because his parents wanted him to be a superhero, but then like he didn't react very well to that. He, and basically, his powers are a curse, and like mm. he's sort of a criminal now. But now it's like he's just a sort of like part of him, like you know, being accepted within a group and be, like kind of doing good and doing good, turning his life around is a big element of his character. But James Gunn said that actually his character was looking for attention, and that he was a, a narcissist, and it's like that doesn't read anywhere within the film. There's nothing to suggest that at all. Other than the fact that, I mean, you'd be surprised. Clinic, clinical narcissism has um, many different ways to manifest like that. Like it, it, I haven't seen it, but if 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 he's, if he behaves in the, like in the trailer and in the meme, you know, I hope so. Um, Yeah. I hope we all die kind of thing. (laughs) If, If that's the way it manifests, like, but he's very often, often those those activities to get attention. Um, but he's know, very no, he's very he's very clear about like you know he does like because like the polka dots grow on his face and he has to throw them up. I didn't twice know that. Day. So like, sorry, I don't want to spoil no, it too much right. because oh shit, yeah. excuse me. But I won't spoil the arc for him because like I think he's probably the best character in that movie, yeah. one of at least. Like um, yeah. but um. Yeah, he has to throw the polka dots up. Um, yeah, no, no, I'm not. I'm not talking like that's like saying you know someone who has an uncontrollable rash or bad acne, you know, is doing it for attention. I'm not talking about that. That's like he if James, if rash. James Gunn is talking about his behavior, where he's like, "Oh, I'm all down in the dumps," yep. there is definitely a whole. That's why. Oh, I'm, there are the whole, narcissists who are that's just why like, there's, my life yeah, that's why there's the whole Duma kind of like <laughs> meme is because I did massive air quotes there, um, is because. <laughs> There are people who are like, oh, I'm so sad and the world is bad and I am hurting on the inside. Like, they don't actually feel like that. All around me. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like, they would want to pretend that that's the anthem to their life. But what they're doing is they're jumping into a tribe that's safe so that they're avoiding criticism. What they're putting out has already been tried and tested by someone else, so they're mimicking. And and that's what monkeys do. We just... Monkey see, monkey do. We mimic <laughs> what we see as successful behavior because it's good for our survival. So the tortured artist is definitely... That's yeah. why people mm. joke that there are six movies made. What? You haven't heard that? There's like this kind of joking criticism that's like there are six movies or, or maybe it's not six, but the same movies are getting made over and over again. And, okay. they're, and they're, they're the same six or eight, however many... Like there's six or eight frameworks... Mm. And that's it. That's all there is. Oh, what are they? A bit of oh, God. Like, uh, I couldn't. I couldn't remember off the top probably, of my head. As much as I want to have a look at it, like now, yeah. I'm probably Google. Go, go, and, have, yeah. go, go and have a look at it, like at yeah. some point. But Viewers, that, something yeah, you need to look at it. That, that's the that's the criticism. Like it's the, the yeah, it's going to be the same thing on repeat forever. Yeah, that's a, like that's pretty interesting. There's definitely like obviously there's a little crossover, and that doesn't. It's because it's, it's successful. That, yeah, that's and that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Journey, it's like, and yeah. if it's successful, it. Um, it sort of preemptively belies criticism. Oh, sorry, but preemptive. So if you if you do what has already if you if you know that tree produces mangoes, you're going to go to that tree to pick mangoes because you picked mangoes there before. So you keep picking mangoes there yeah. until it no longer provides mangoes. Then you will try a new tree. Yeah, that movie format keeps bringing in the big bucks. So you're going to keep <laughs> trying that movie format if it ain't broke, but. Uh, yeah, that's it's more than it's more than if it ain't broke. It's if it's if it works, work it. Yeah, that's kind of like that's. I, I would definitely, which like, I'm pretty sure I think is like from Legally Blonde, or it, it's <laughs> from one of those. Yeah, if it works, I work seen it. I've that movie in ages, but uh, I, I don't. Uh, someone's gonna flay me for that. I <laughs> don't really care. I haven't seen Legally Blonde either, <gasps> or <Is> Clueless. <gasps> oh, Clueless is pretty good. Yeah, pretty I. I, I I want to see Clueless. I'm not interested in Legally Blonde. <laughs> like, it's fine. Yeah. Clueless, Legally Blonde, and Mean Girls are like three of the like, yeah, they're pretty like, good. They're the they're the they're the Trinity. You know? Yeah, yeah. They're the Trinity like, of like millennial 
kind of you know <laughs> that's sort of like going from john hughes into like these more cheesy over the top parody kind mm-hmm. of ones yeah, i'd say yeah. 10 things i hate about you is close but i don't think it's as good as like yeah, it's in mean a different girls. it's in a different league yeah it is trying to be a bit more edgy i suppose like just, uh, yeah, a bit more edgy but it is also trying to be a bit more feelsy like the con- the you know the comedies with feeling yeah, that's a weird one that sets itself up to be so absurd with like, we've got fucking cowboy clicks. But it's just like, you know. <laughs> I haven't seen 10 Things I Hate About You. What? Oh, sorry. I haven't seen all of it. I've seen bits and pieces. Oh, okay. There's yeah. a cowboy click. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and then there's the white uh, <laughs> Rastafarians. Road, cold beer. <laughs> <laughs> Blue oh, jeans, man. red pickup. Oh, my God. Fucking the amount of like bro country songs on like our radio Bro work country. oh i don't want to get into that no it's such a it's such a good it's such a good word for but it. i want to go back to something because we were talking about like like just say i i understand that i'm just using it as sort of the hypothetical no, i think it can apply to like artwork in a sense just like if you're just say like you know shitty behavior and the criticism of it which one's more valuable i think the criticism is more like of course like that the behavior Criti- had to be there criticism of too. shitty behavior like you know it it, 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 it um we we have a propensity to do it. So that that was the other feeling that I wanted to get to. I can get to because I was saying like there's two inclinations, right? And obviously, mm. the the inclination is to avoid criticism because yeah. that means rejection. But the other inclination is to seek out behavior to critique, right? And we're aware of they 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 are almost the two sides of a coin kind of thing because the the they they are complementary to the continuation of um of a group yeah right because you weed out what is destructive and non-cooperative and continue what is cooperative and mm. productive so which is kind of can be applied you don't to wanna, art and stuff as yeah, well, well, yeah, that, that's where yeah. the feeling comes from right? yeah it's just your monkey brain telling you like if this is bad <laughs> they'll kick you out of the tribe and you will die but to an extent but like we look at it's just like you know I, so, i'm not saying that will happen what i'm saying is like that's what we feel Right, and however we feel it to whatever level, some people will feel it more or less than others. Some people will be like, "Well, I'm a bit anxious about putting this out." Other people will have a full meltdown and probably never publish a thing, right? <laughs> yeah, but they may possible. produce like, you know, Raphael's and you know, um, 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 Monet's. You know, hmm. th- you know, they may produce beautiful works, but uh, um, um, Van Gogh, yeah, like yeah. it, he. He couldn't get traction where he did try, but he was also so torn up about himself. Um, no, <laughs> that's terrible. He, really sorry. He had um, like yeah, he had he had a, probably a whole host of issues, and yeah, you know, we yeah. cannot diagnose him because we don't know the man. Yeah, you know, yeah, and we're also not professionals in that field. But mm. uh, you know, it, reading what other people say is that it's quite likely that he had a whole host of issues. Yeah, yeah. um, and. It seems he recognized them in himself uh, to a greater or lesser extent and therefore beat himself up about them. Yeah. Sorry for the background noise, everybody. By the way, yeah, neighbors are putting the bins out. Yeah, bastards. Um, but um, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. can kind of be applied. But if we looked at those lenses of just like, you know, when somebody criticizes like the shitty behavior that can be like bad from um, – the peripherals of the, the the standard of say nutritional health even mm. as like mm. the most simplest thing yeah it's just like that's why like i look at when with stories whether it's like you know consistency like world building actually fitting in like you know not contradicting previously established information for seemingly no reason mm. so like when we say like nutrition it's like this is like by that it is bad for you especially in these yeah. excess amounts but, but that so, but that's like that's the difference between you know a measurable response and uh um and an emotional response. No, we take we, people like you know sometimes like you know unnutritional things. So that's like that's the emotional. Uh, whereas like the, 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 the actual. I like, mean, there's a physiological thing to it. Yeah, that, I, that's if, a, if I think that's sorry, a bit more complex. Yeah, I want to like yeah. just like you know it's like that is like what we say about the the car. It's like I still love that scene. I still love that movie. Mm. But like it is still there, and it's just like kind of like you know there are movies that I like that are like really badly written, but. You know, you can concede that they're badly written. Just saying the same, like, I love ice cream, but it is bad for me in the excess, excess amounts. Yeah, but that, like, that, again, that's recognizing something that is measurable and objective, whereas the, the car thing is what value you, you ascribe to something. 
Well, I could just, couldn't you like stretch it so far to say like, what do you, value like you it, place in nutritional? Like, like, like you you ascribe it a negative value. I ascribe it zero value. It's not it's not a good thing. I couldn't call it a good thing to the seam, but I, I don't call it a bad thing because I I do not value it a, like as a, as negative. What, what, I, it's just it's what, there. It what, just is, and so I just I move on with my viewing of the movie. What if somebody were to say that about nutrition though? Well, then they're just wrong because <laughs> they're going to have a heart attack before I do. Okay, but well, that movie just broke its that own. That movie isn't going to cause someone a heart attack because there's a car in the yes, background. Yes, it's, like, it's yes, it's not. It's, do not, that. it's, it's not the. It's it not is going passion, to break the not logic. Passion of the Christ. That's the lens, though. That's the lens of just of like that that standard. But it, the movie kind of sets for itself. Yeah, that's why like every movie, it's case by case. It's all different. Like not every movie is held to the same, you know, sort of self standard. Like. Especially when you look at like sort of um, something like Xavier Renegade Angel, where there's just no fucking sense to anything, but and then like that. or like a parody movie like Airplane, where it's like the logic of the world. It's like you could like it is with it, it is the standard of that world that it it is absurdism. Make it makes no sense because yeah, it is but, all about the yeah, but absurdism. Those, yeah, but that's 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 the whole intent because it's it's a comedy movie that's meant to parody yeah it's those the, airplane action films it's the intent and also it's what makes sense within the grounds the movie has set for itself in terms of like it's kind of it's meant to be like sort of a palette of like a setting that you've seen before that makes sense in our own world but then all these absurd completely inexplainable things happen and the absurdism is yeah. the humor but the reason and, yeah but the reason is the reason is is because th- that you can find that funny and acceptable within its whole gamut is because it um it doesn't stretch suspension of disbelief too far yeah the the it's it's not beyond suspension of disbelief to think however unlikely that all of the editors and the director and all the people you know in any test audiences for the fellowship of the ring didn't see the car right yeah it's it's very unlikely, but the point is, is that what that tells me about that scene is that it is so well done. No one was looking in the background for an error, and anyone who was probably has a very sad, lonely little existence that they had hey. to go and that they had to go and look for that, and then point it out to people, being like, "Look, see, see this little error in the background I found. I'm, I'm, I'm so clever. See, I'm so smart." I like, would. And this, is, okay. and this goes back to my point earlier about there is something that makes up a critic that doesn't make up a creator and it's very unlikely for the two to exist together. Andy Warhol being a famous exec- <laughs> exemption. Well, um, I think there's a lot of like, that's a, that's a tangled web to untangle, like in terms of like what we could discuss, but, uh, but I, I definitely want to like, because now, now is again, what has already been the perfect time to pick up Wonder Woman. <laughs> now is already again, what has been, <laughs> that's some wisdom. It was written on the first try. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, it was so, written, it was so written, as it was written. Yeah, so it was first. written on the first draft. Yeah. Um, but yeah, come on. But, um, Let, let's do this. Let's do right. this. Eighty-four. Thing. Because the intentions thing that you bring up, and what we talked about in terms of the value that's placed in between the criticism and the creation of that specific example of the car, because there is just so much that is working about that scene that going against that. But like, if we took that out. If we took the car out, all that would be changed is the surface level fact that it's like, oh, there was that error that was there, and now it is gone. Wait, are we talking about Wonder Woman eighty four? No, I'm I'm, oh, I'm, okay, I'm setting yeah. up so we talked about the Lord of the yeah, Rings. Yeah, sorry, yeah, 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 yep. Yeah. But I think there's something in Wonder Woman eighty four, much more egregious. So she unintentionally, as far as like I can I can recall, makes a wish with the wishing stone, because she like I don't know I can't remember yeah. if she vocalizes it or if it yeah, is like she something wishes internal. to get. What's his name? Steve back? Trevor. Back. Steve Trevor. And what happens? I was going to say one of the Steves, <laughs> a Steve of sorts. Yeah. Um, he comes back. S- and superhero, inhabits- all American Steve. <laughs> he inhabits the body of another person, yeah. and whether that person's conscious has been taken out of their body and placed in some realm oh, of like. Oh no! Like- I don't, okay, I don't. I. I <laughs> okay. I, I. I. They've unwillingly I had their conscience I taken I, out. I, I, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. That's that's fair enough to not. I, think I, like... I, if I'm being honest, I, I I don't know. I don't even know if people have thought about this as well. The implication, yeah, maybe I, they I, haven't. I, but it's like as soon as you recognize, as soon as you pointed out, the director denies it, even if there wasn't their so, intention. Uh, so what? Hang still... on. Tell me what's what's the argument? Is it because it's 
he's controlling someone else's body. Yeah, they're subconscious. We have no idea what has happened to it. Either it has been taken out and just erased from the plane of existence so the, until it's brought the back. The question is, or, like, is yeah, is the original person in that body aware? Yeah, that's the thing. Basically, uh, uh, but is by that, the end is of the film... What you, is that what you're talking about? The end of the film, whether they it reveals, like... Because... Th- that's the thing. The end of the film shows it's just like, oh, he's back. The body's back and he's talking with Diana. It's a cute little sister. It's like, oh, she has been sleeping with your body with the <laughs> for the past week or so. Um, and, and nobody recognizes the fact that like, you know, his body is like, he, Steve Trevor using his body has broken into the Smithsonian Museum, has been seen in all these different scenarios with Wonder Woman. Yeah. They're like, you know, probably caught on camera. I'm pretty sure the Smithsonian back in the 80s had cameras. I'm like, I, I could be wrong. <laughs> but, um, and yeah, no, no consequences come with that. But basically because, you know, the ending is just like the contrivance of all contrivances. It is just broken because they just like everyone in the world just reverts their wishes because Wonder Woman gives a nice speech. Even though, like, sorry, that's another thing to go into. All I'm going to say is like whether this guy's conscience was completely like put on hold and just like he was just like, you know, put in a plane of non-existence until the, the you know, she reverted her wish at the end and then his conscience came back. Or if... The conscience was there experiencing the whole thing, but then had his Con- memory. Conscious. Conscious. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm right. emphasizing right. the wrong. Yeah, yeah. Conscious is experiencing the wrong. Excuse me. And then he had his memory erased and now he's back. Wh- whichever one it is, she used, still used his body in that regard yeah. to, like, you know, kind of, and did end up sleeping with it. So, like, obviously we don't have the grounds to be able to do that within our lives within like you know the, yeah. the world that we exist so it is something of a thought experiment to be had about but, uh, okay, that because that's what i was going to get at. like it, i i think personally i think it's beyond me to get into a philosophical yeah a, 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 sorry a discussion over a philosophical exercise over what would constitute rape in this fantasy setting i'm not saying that it doesn't what i'm saying is like i watched it once i did not think about that movie deeply enough Maybe I should have, <laughs> if, no, like if 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 you're under no bo- obligation to. That's the no, thing. It's no, like, I, yeah, I, I, like I know, but what I'm saying is like I, I, I don't know. I, I was really only half paying attention to that movie. <laughs> it looked nice. I can I can remember <laughs> yeah. that about the film, right? Like it there was a lot of colors. Yes, there was a lot of colors. Um, Toy Story Four looked nice. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Like it does raise an interesting question. Uh, yeah, I, I like I, I, I could probably go into the. <laughs> the you know the the philosophical aspects of it but i'm so far removed from being a philosopher as well so yeah yeah. like i I just i think in a lot of regards i'm not geared to make that that assessment fair enough i guess like as a you know as compared to saying like you know no lord of the rings is still great despite the car (laughs) in the background (laughs) yeah no yeah fair enough i yeah again if I sprung that on you or... Uh, no, 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 it's fine. I, was, I just, I was just... Yeah. I was just kind of like... I, you know, I was just like, <laughs> uh, did I watch the right film? Yeah. I'll, maybe I'll bring that up and also you've heard of the you movie. Know, all my friends go into Wonder Woman 84 and I walk into the Sesame Street movie and I'm like, where are these guys? Yeah. <laughs> but um, I'll, I'll, I'll bring that up and along with the movie Cuties in that like, you know, regardless of the intentions, there was I still... remember, I remember seeing the ad for Cuties. I, like, mm. I, all I... I'm... I'm it, they were like cheerleaders or something or dancers. I don't yeah, know. that was I really saw bad. The, I saw Netflix. the ad, po- like I saw the ad poster because it was kicking around the internet. Yeah. You know, the movie that, that's that's different. That's a willful choice because they're playing off that whole teen mum thing. Yeah. The, the way they portrayed it is like, but the intentions are supposed to be a criticism of the child, like sort of, of like you know like i, yeah, I, I like, don't want to get I, demonetized yeah, I think it, um yeah, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not monetized anyway what the fuck am i talking about mm. but um but like if that if that was the point like to criticize the exploitation of children in things like you know like teen mum and um that was the in- shows like that that was the intention but like what they actually did have Paget was- mums that's another one isn't it i think so something like that but they uh, did like teen mum and they oh yeah because yeah there's that um honey boo boo yeah, 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 and she got turned into a meme. Yeah. She just said some of the most whack stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, look, maybe the intention was noble, but it might have it might have had a poor execution. Yeah, you tried to cri- like the point of that was like they tried to criticize child, uh, basically child exploitation by exploiting children in the film. <laughs> they they have close ups on eleven year olds like buttocks, not bare right, or anything, but like it. as they're twerking and doing like. I haven't, yeah, I haven't of, watched it, but that sounds 
Yes, it was very like maybe the best of intentions you possibly could have had. I want to be best faith there, but the way that they executed a good, it, a good, well, like probably a better way to do that was you know you you have an actor playing a cameraman and he's filming in in a like you have him maybe not like you know he's not like grinning or something, but like he's just doing his job. Yeah, and he's like filming, and the implication of how he's positioned the camera implies that it's going to be a gratuitous angle. Yeah, or or e- and then cut to the gratuitous angle or something on the child, right? Do you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, show show that the production is the exploitation. That could be a good way to go around it. I, I I, I, I'm like, just yeah. going off what you've told me. I haven't. Seen no, but you're it, but actually absolutely correct because it is kind of cut and dry in this one, unfortunately. Because I, I just uh, yeah, because like going off what you said, I just assumed that's what you would have done. But then mm. you've described it, and if that's consistent throughout it, yeah, it is then just like it what just the... seems like a missed misguided like, sort of not misguided like it just seems missed like a missed point like yeah definitely they 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 missed they missed the element that they needed yeah i would definitely agree um, like there's there's really gratuitous oh scenes my gosh i just realized i'm criticized again i'm not saying i'm not saying cuties is good or bad but i'm saying i just realized i'm criticized you got me i'm i've been infected <laughs> oh no, i'm turning into a critic <laughs> no I'll but nev- that's i'll never create again that's the reason I bring up that in Wonder Woman 84 is because I think the criticism of those elements were more mm. of value than, you know, the thing itself. Kind of like the, the shitty behavior thing that I'm trying to Yeah, so that, but like I'd call that uh, it, more in the cutie sense. Uh, I don't know about the 84 thing. But yeah, like in, more in the cutie sense, I'd call that, you know, that's criticizing shitty behavior. You know, that's, that's weeding the bad things out to keep, you know, Keep the tribe safe. Apes together strong. <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah. and then, you know, but that's different from an artist who's scared to hang their picture in a gallery for a showing, yeah. right? Oh. It, it's 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 a different it's a different behavior set, but it's the same emotional reaction. Being scared to 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 present something as opposed to being scared to behave in a certain way. Because it will receive criticism, right? They're both yeah. they're both going to receive criticism, hmm. but the material effects of one or the other, particularly now in the modern day, are completely different. Yeah, yeah. And that's uh, why that's why I'm like art critics, get rid of them. <laughs> uh, there's pointless pointless facet to society. I never gain too much, like just from the way I appreciate art. But that's or like, or stop paying them. Oof, Make um, them like ancient Greek philosophers. They can sing for their supper. <laughs> their criticism's really good. Rich white people in you know, um, in the nice you know in the nice suburbs of their cities can you know throw them a you know throw them a you know a, a, a column in the paper and and pay them on commission, <laughs> and then they can enjoy what it's like to be an artist that they're ripping down. Because that's the other thing too. I, like a lot of these, you know, chuckle nuts are. You know, they you know columnists and career journalists that have worked their way up, you know, to do this. Yeah, and they they have a salary, and then they'll shit on a uh, on a book or a painting by an up and coming author or painter, and and possibly head off that person's career. And that's I think that's part of the reason why old media is so shit scared of new media is because baby they don't need your approval to get noticed anymore yeah and that's what's kind of terrifying if you ask me <laughs> like, but, like, no no like, but but the point is is like each taste can be serviced oh, you yeah, don't like, have you don't have this intermediary uh, who who selects from the six flavors what one flavor everybody eats everybody oh, can you. can find which of the six flavors they most prefer? Yeah, it was much more. Like it's the free market, baby. <laughs> the, the the critic used to kind of be like what filtered out between. You that know, and talk your... about gatekeeping. <laughs> yeah, it definitely wasn't. Yeah, yeah. The, like, the critic yeah. used to be the the the, the filter. Yeah, that was. And, way that, mo- and that's not. I mean, it's still there, but it's not as potent as it once. Uh, if once anything, it's was. gone the other way. <laughs> Because you've got these big companies that are just like, it's a like, critic, we will take you, we will fly you overseas to go see our movie if you say good things. Yeah. That, but that's, um yeah, so there's a lot, a lot of like that we've uh, discussed and uh, gone through over here. I'd say that like checking your watch, obviously you got to 
bit of time. Yeah, uh, you gotta, like, head well, I think w- were we saying this at the start? Like, you know, I'm always late to things, <laughs> so, and like the, I'm gonna be late to another thing. Oh shit! So like we're at the point now where it's like so we've looked at creation versus criticism. We obviously haven't arrived at a set, but we got a little bit off topic. But I, I really like enjoyed yeah. that discussion. So thank you very much for having that. Uh, Quick disclaimer for everyone. I called him uh, Package. That's his nickname. <laughs> like the chainmail thing, I'm going to leave that up for you to decipher why he's called Package. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thanks for this, man. This has been like a really great discussion. I like, yeah, we didn't, uh, I wasn't assuming that we'd reach a conclusion because no. like we're still, we're where we were uh, kind of at the start where there is, kind is of just like, I, I understand you, it's, why you it's would. It's not, it's not something that can have a conclusive answer. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's definitely. I just have feelings, man. <laughs> and I feel that critics suck. <laughs> <laughs> totally fair, and, I, and I'm still at the point where I feel like yeah, where you hate kind of creators. Like, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, stop fucking creating, and I'll stop criticizing. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> <Like, laughs> I'm both trying to stop it stop all. Stop doing either. <laughs> I don't want art to exist. It's just like it just gets in the way. Like Christ. <laughs> more toy stories the more wars or some shit I don't, uh, don't ever say anything truly controversial someone will come back and clip you out of context being like I don't want art to exist <laughs> it's just like that's my main goal I'm gonna put that as my cha- like, uh, <laughs> my channel description um, but uh, yeah that's, kind of- <laughs> that's, that's the name of the podcast series I, I don't, don't want, want art to exist, to exist. <laughs> uh, I think that, that that's a good close yeah, yeah. absolutely goodbye everybody <laughs>